Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting for uh, Will Sasso, and Fuckface is late as usual. He's always a half hour late, 100%. There's no question. I'll get a text that says, boy, this place is far away, huh? You've been here before, Sasso. My buddy, Nate Schomer, has got a show on Animal Planet called From Rescue Dog to Super Dog, uh, hope, hoping for a second season. He trained my dogs. He wanted to come in and watch the podcast because he's a fan. So while we wait for Will, I'm going to ask Nate a bunch of questions about dogs. Dude, he took my dogs for two weeks, and basically they came back and they were doing calculus derivatives. <laughs> they were like, they were talking. It was it was crazy. What's the smartest dog? What's the smartest breed of dog right now? You know, smartest dog. It's it's pretty arguable. Uh, a lot of people will say that the border collie is the yeah. smartest dog. I mean, it's incredibly capable. It can learn so many different commands. But then we also want to look at trainability. Which dog is the most trainable? I personally love the Belgian Malinois because they're so driven, so motivated. And even though they're not as smart as the Border Collie, they can still accomplish some incredible tasks because of that drive and motivation. So so if if the zombie apocalypse comes... Oh, I want a Malinois. You want a Malinois? Oh, yeah. Really? 100%. Because they're they're, they're going to inhale. They're going to inhale anybody who comes after you. Oh, yeah. You you can have them do everything. They love it too. Really? That's the best part, right? You know, I mean, we've talked about protection training and bite work and stuff like that before. And, you know, there's this misconception that the dogs don't enjoy it. Right. But you've seen it. And what's your take on it? They, they, they like biting that sleeve more than they like any kind of food you could possibly give them. Oh, yeah. They, there's, it's, it's like, it's like, the, I mean, it's almost like sex, like the way, like if you had this beautiful woman and they were like, don't touch her and you haven't had sex in 10 years. You're like, ah, ah. like, like they, they freak out. Like those, those serious game bred are those sort of like prey drive dogs. Those, those police dogs, they're, 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 they're biting, they're clicking their teeth. They're like, nah, nah, nah. and then you, you present the sleeve and they hit it like, like there's zero hesitation. That's like the best analogy I think I've ever heard for that. Yeah. It's, hilarious i mean i love doing it it's an incredibly fun sport it's very uh it's a workout too right oh yeah i mean you you of course you're gonna sweat a ton and get a great workout and you've got a great body nate was (laughs) nate was a marine for nine years a real marine to be exact seven years and seven months black belt which is a weird in in marine martial arts yeah seven years any any black belt in jujitsu is gonna kick my butt (laughs) even the purple belts blue belts kick my butt i don't give a shit man you train dogs (laughs) and you're a marine you're a stud um, so, so what were you saying? So, so about, what was I saying? Something about the Malinois, I believe. Okay. About wait, wait. So, so, so Malinois for the zombie apocalypse. What about an Eastern German line, German shepherd or a Rottweiler? You have to, I mean, German shepherds can make fantastic dogs, especially when it comes to having a family or like a protection dog, because they have that on and off switch. Yeah. So they can go out there. They can do the work. Arguably as good as a Malinois, but then they do have that off switch. They can relax. They can cuddle with the family. But that's not to say that a Malinois can't do that either. Well, I mean, I have a Malinois, and she will snuggle up with anyone. It doesn't really? matter. Yeah. She's but but she'll also bite, bite you in the face? I know, well, I don't teach her to bite in the face, but <laughs> <laughs> she loves the bite suit. She loves the tug toys, and she has a So it's, a, it's more that. of a game for her. It's not it's fight a, drive? Yeah, it's a game for all of them. I mean, what I tell people, when somebody comes out in a bite suit, the dog's not looking to bite that person. That's not their intent, although some are. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Uh, especially police dogs. They got to train them for that more civil type work. But a lot of the dogs that I work with are sport dogs. You know, if they accidentally bite your hand, let's say, they immediately let go and they go, oh, sorry, sorry, I did not mean to bite your hand. Should we go back and So train? then that's not, because when I was in Afghanistan, I, Afghanistan, I, uh, <laughs> I put on a bite suit and they had these Malinois. And when they had the Malinois in the cage, they were like, ah, ah, they were going crazy. And I was like, do not open that cage. Like, no, nah, don't worry about it. The minute they opened the cage, they came out and they were like, they were fine. Right. Like, I thought they were trying to get at me. They were barking and trying to bite at the cage. The minute they opened the cage, the, the dog came out, circled around, and was just kind of like sniffing. And I was like, dude, the thing was literally looking me in the eye trying to kill me. Well, those handlers have good control, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. I, well, well, but the, then again, so they put on, we put on the bite suit, but I didn't have a helmet. And I was like, shouldn't I have my head protected? They're like, <laughs> nah, they won't bite your hand. So for them, it was kind of a game. Mm-hmm. But how do you get the dog from going, like, like in a real life situation? If somebody's hitting them or shooting a gun, or actually trying to hurt them or you, how do you get that dog to transfer that? And there's a lot of different ways that trainers will work with dogs to get them to that point of being an actual protection dog or a police dog or a military dog. The training is going to be a little bit different. A lot of the foundation work is the same, getting the dog to love the training, getting the dog to do a full bite, to hold on. There's a lot to it, but even with you know police 
canine training, there's a lot of different aspects that they have to look at. Uh, something I believe it's called, I could be getting this wrong, so if anybody is listening to this and they're an expert when it comes to police canine training, I apologize. Uh, but they have something that's called like the blue fog. So they teach the dogs when they bite not to let go at all right. because they don't want the dog to let go of the bite and redirect on a police officer. And they don't want the dog chewing oh, because wow. if the dog is chewing on the – criminal that was trying to escape or whatever then that's a huge liability issue if the person has like 30 bites on their arm it should well, be the one where they lock down police come in they arrest the suspect and then they take the dog off that's like my friend who got in a fight with all these cops in philly and that's a he, bad he idea he was drunk but he's a giant <laughs> and he kicked uh he kicked the dog in the ass and the dog redirected on a dude across the street who was running oh wow and took that dude down <laughs> and that's why he got off because there was such a lawsuit that the cops mm. didn't, the Philly police didn't mm. want this huge like lawsuit and all this publicity. But the dog redirected because my friend grabbed the cop, threw the cop, threw the cop on the dog as it was coming at him. He saw that the, he saw them let the dog through the, the go from the truck. And then he kicked the dog in the ass. If you know my friend, you understand this. Like he's a big, big. Dude. There's an article. Like he, there's an article framed of a of a uh, woman, a cop, a uh, huge woman in a in a neck brace because she was part of the melee. And I think it was oh, before they had tasers. I don't know what it was, but this is like in the 80s when he was playing football. Oh wow! And he's if you know him, he's he was two two eighty and six two, and it was all muscle, and he could dunk a basketball. He was weird strong, <laughs> dude. You know, one of those fucking guys where you can tase him and he's like, ah, fuck. And he grabs Pulls you. Pulls it out. And yeah, literally. Yeah. Literally. Like some dudes, it just doesn't work. Um, he, he was like, I, I know guys like that where he was one of those guys who would, um, like he was at a football game and they had a they had a dog there and he was staring at it. I wasn't there, but my friend was like, what are you looking at? And he goes, I'm looking, about, I'm looking at that dog. And he goes, well, what are you looking at? And he goes, I kill that dog. And they go, well, what do you mean? He goes, I'm just thinking that that dog came at me, like what I would do. And his friend goes, what would you do? He goes, I think I'd kick its legs out. And then, <laughs> and then when it fell on the ground, I'd like, I'd jump on it and I'd strangle it. <laughs> and he was, he was trying to go through the whole, the motions of what he would do. Have you ever heard of the, it makes me think of, uh, I was talking to somebody who's an incredible MMA fighter. And he said, you know, there's been times where I've taken somebody who only worked you know, let's say one specific martial arts and he's like, and I hit him a couple times and their belt level starts to drop because that panic sets in because they're not used to actually being. That's hit. a saying that they have. They say, so they say with your black belt and just jujitsu, like MMA guys will be like, they go, Oh, your black belt, brown belt. Right. You know, exactly. Uh, yeah. blue, red belt. Gray, you know, I can't remember the belts, but you know, purple <laughs> belt, blue belt, white belt, you know, right. I just punch you five times and you go right back down to a white belt. And that's what I think is very uh, similar to with like a dog. I've had a lot of people tell me, Oh, I could take on a protection trained dog or a police dog. And I'm thinking to myself, no, you most likely you can't. No, you when that dog comes and rips off your tricep, <laughs> All of a sudden, your perspective completely changes. Fuck now you're yes. just screaming for help. Fuck yes. I mean, I, my buddy who's a SWAT sergeant said that to me. That he deployed a dog on, uh, I shouldn't have seen this, but I did, uh, on this this giant Green Beret guy. I saw, they, he was t he had two cops in a canal in, in, uh, in Florida, and he was basically fighting them and drowning them. And he let his dog go. That dog grabbed his arm, the top of his arm. He had, he had huge arm. But he shut down. And I go, what happened? He goes, my dog's a wolf, bro. It's a hundred pound shepherd. Mm. When it grabs on, the nerves shut down. Your arm shuts down. You're not, you're not fighting that dog. Yeah. That's an animal. That's a hundred pound wolf. That's got crazy pound per square inch pressure. And I don't think people real, cause I've, I felt a Malinois bite on Through with the, the suit, bite suit, right? dude. And yeah. I panicked. Exactly. Uh, we have it on videotape. Dove David off the comic was like, get it off me. Get your wolf off me. He was freaking out. <laughs> They bite well, like I couldn't believe the pressure just in the bite suit. And that's a funny thing oh, too because Will fucking Sasso, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. What's happening? Will Sasso. Yeah. Nate, Nate, Hi, Nate Schomer. Nate, Nate Schomer yeah, and I are talking because you were late. You, Nate, hey man, no, take that. <laughs> get that get that sign off, bro. Get that sign off. What's up, man? All right, dude. Take 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 it easy, bro. Ah, what are you doing? All right, we're already. This is our secret handshake. No, it's not. I've never agreed to this handshake, bro. What are you, what are you doing, man? I don't want to. Ten times every oh, direction. No. <laughs> Will Sasso, Nate, I want to thank oh, you yeah. for making an appearance on the Fighter and the Kid. Well, you and the man. Nope. Oh, the Fighter and the so Kid, much. the man. All right, take it. Hey, easy. I'm just here to co-host the show, sitting in for Brennan Shop. Big Brennan Shop's got the big brown breakdown. Check it out. Uh, 
Brad Brandon's got a new. No, no don't talk about. He's his got a podcast. new. Well, he's got a new this, line of socks. Nope, he doesn't. Big brown socks. <laughs> no, I don't think he does. Big brown socks. Check out I, your big brown socks at bigbrownsocks.com. They're brown, they're big, what, and they're socks. No, nope. if you have over a size seventeen foot. You're going to want Big Brown's wick away moisture God technology. All right. If you got big, <laughs> shitty, stinky, sweaty feet like me. Now, Brian, you know I wear a size 22, and I will put it through your face no, if no. you keep at me about being late. No. Don't hang a sign on the door I'm supposed to walk through ever again. I do take that as an offense. <laughs> okay, now listen up. BigBrownSocks.com. No, the fuck up about the big only brown. way to get your Big Brown breakdown. This is not an advertisement big for brown Big socks. Brown fucking socks. Listen up. Big you brown. you would try to bring that foot. Hey, I bet you didn't know God that brown has there's been eighty seven shades of brown. Listen, listen up. We got hundred and fifty. You colors. wouldn't reach my face with your foot because I move so quickly and I can measure distance. And you would kick and you'd overstep and then your fucking face would be here and I would go back, back, yeah. back. Yeah, I go well, boop, boop, boop because yeah. I understand combinations. Boop, boop, yeah. whack. Hey. And then you'd go, meh, 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 and okay. you'd shit your pants. How did you um, shit your pants and have to run away? Hey, how did that guy, what was that guy, the crocodile hunter? Crocodile Dundee? No, the guy, the, the uh, fellow Steve who Irwin. passed away. Steve, Steve fucking Irwin. Steve Irwin. Now, how did he die? I'm already annoyed with this giant fucking water bottle of yours, man. You drink too much water, bro. You just do. You drink too much water. You can't, excuse me, oh, drink enough water. I can't take it. You How did Steve Irwin die? Someone. He had, he got, he, he tried to pet a stingray from what I understand. Yeah. And it shot its, its, uh, barb into his heart and God bless the man. He passed away. How big's a stingray? I don't know. Well, it was probably a very big stingray. It probably had a, a wingspan of about six to eight feet. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and say, we're going to go ahead and put the over under at under when we say that my foot is the size of a stingray. It's probably a little smaller, right? It, it's a little smaller. But not by much. I, I don't and know. And I don't believe in getting pedicures, yeah, okay? okay? So if you come close to me and I'm just wagging my foot around <laughs> and I just send a gnarled yellow toenail don't. into your chest Careful. I cut you. Don't. don't. If I cut you Get with my finger. toenail Get and you bleed finger. out, no, nope. I'm not touching you. Get your finger. This is my podcast. You. Get I'm your finger the fuck. Bro, I'm, I'm warning you. Hey, you I can be on the telephone. Bro, I can push. I can hello, be pushed just so far. Oh, I'm Brian. I can be pushed Hi, just Mom, so far. How are you? You push it. One Brian Callen. I can I'm up. on the phone. I, that's not Will's, my voice. Will's fingers aren't in my that's ear. Not my Mouth. voice. Oh, I touched your earlobe a little bit. I can only be pushed so far. See. <sighs> all right, Will. What's up, man? Not much. First of all, f- welcome back from Canada. You Thank spent, you very much. You spent too much time in Canada. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck you were. You spent too much time in I Canada. I did. I went to Canada for way too long. Yeah. And the other thing you guys need to know is that Will, Crystalia, and Marshall, are all, we're all on a thread. And Marshall. They know and just Marshall. Cook. Marshall. Marshall Cook, our hey, buddy. Hey, you know Marshall. He's our buddy. Yeah, our good buddy Marshall Cook. <clears throat> Writer, director, extraordinaire, Marshall and, Cook. And hey, we just finished a script. Yeah, I know you that did. We wanna, no, we just rewrote a script. Yeah. And things, so we were going to need you to get that to... Patty Jenkins, yeah, and uh, Todd Phillips, yeah, and Grillo, yeah, and we're just going to need you to get it. We're going to need to get need you to get it around. That's why I got I'm here long today. arms. I got long arms, so but, I can do that. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, I'm going to need you to. I'm going to need you to do some clerical duties for me nope, today. Nope. Once we finish up with your nope. pod show, don't be We're going to sit down, nope. and we are going to You're being disrespectful. I'm going to sit over. I'm going to nope. sit over your shoulder. No, nope. no, nope. and I'm going to drink. You're going to make me a protein shake. No, I'm not a kid. Not a your, tangy your, protein shake that's going to make my breath bad. No, nope, not your And servant. then I'm going to sit over not, your shoulder and go, your, yeah. Not, not your fucking And Patty servant. Jenkins. No. Nope. Is that her G, is it Gmail? No, I'm not agreeing to that. So. And that's what I would like no, you to do for you, the rest of the day. You're, you're going to do some clerical duties. You're being rude. You're going to get this amazing script out. And the next time yeah. I come on The Fighter and the Kid and the Man, yeah. I'll call it the man. We're gonna, I'm going to tell you about all the wonderful strides we've made in getting this script out there and doing the movie, you know, getting the movie made because that's what fucking matters right is making movies not right. hanging out in canada with my adorable little parents is that what you and my doing? friends and family well you were with that's not what matters you're a- come down to hollywood everybody right, take it easy bro. oh i came back here and i'm like of course i should be here in my house all by myself oh no oh what a great oh. time all right oh i'm so glad that i'm 
pursuing All right, my take career. It take it easy, bro. This is not a place. You know how long I've been in show business? Probably 20. 52 years. No, I don't know if you're that old. 52 years in show business. It feels that way for you right now because you're not having a good time. Well, I'm having a great time, actually. Things are going swell. You We're are- not going to talk about that because I love your listeners. I enjoy coming on the podcast anytime I'm on the podcast. Thank you. You have a wonderful and loyal listenership. Yeah, we do. We do not want them army. to. Yeah, they are. And we don't want to hear them going like, oh, that asshole talked about this for too much. Or that for too much. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine to let you drive. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> and, don't, um, don't, don't no, I was be just... condescending, though. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking about something that nope. I saw on TV. No, nope. you were laughing <laughs> uh... <laughs> at the idea of me. No, driving. no, no. Because no. like... you're already trying to be the alpha male in this. In no, this no, 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 no. no, I don't. That's That shit either comes naturally well, or it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Don't fucking. I'm, um, I'm an alpha too, so that's the thing. Well, don't. Yeah. yeah, but don't look but what I, you're doing. You know what? Because I, I don't get, like your body because, language. Because I'm not. I can afraid, sit up too. I'm not afraid to fight you, and I'll say that right now. Look at you. You're sitting. You got. You need your don't, knee under you. Don't to get, nudge my to fu- get you up. Don't touch my You don't have personage. a big man ass like me. Okay. I got a big fat man ass. Oh God. Yeah. What What do you do with that? Well, my big fat man. You ever, ass? Ha- you ever have a girl? Be honest with me. You ever have a woman? Because I know you. See, you get you get girls sometimes that like their big man. They like a big man. You ever have a woman? Get get ex- just work work your ass. Work my ass. You know what I asked you. <laughs> yeah, I've had women like stand on my ass. Yeah, what else? You ever, you ever have a girl just knead it like dough? Just yeah, like, knead it like dough. Man ass. Just get down and knead it. Yeah. Or uh, you know, hold the edge of the. I have a very regal looking bed, so the uh, head the know. headboard is very regal and it goes up. And there's 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 leather. There's wood. Okay. Very regal. Don't fuck that noise. That word, and, uh, noise and they'll hold it and then they'll just you know geisha my ass with they their geisha. feet. They yeah. and if I get ass? too relaxed, then, you know, oh. <laughs> a little size five oh, no. up your shitter. Oh, God, you know, Will. Brian and I used to have a podcast. Yeah. And uh, it's called the 10-Minute Podcast. Yeah, we know. And it's still on. Yeah. You were on recently, not yeah. too long ago. Hilarious. That yeah. was hilarious. Uh, and I always invite your listeners to go check out the 10-Minute Podcast. Yeah. But they better do it quick because we got something called the diamonding happening. What's the diamonding, Will? <sighs> Oh boy! The origins of the diamonding lie in uh, my good pals who do the the podcast with me now. Because no, I just Writer, ask because I, I got a, you know I got a diamond shaped piss hole. You do have a diamond shaped piss hole. I got I got a real piss hole. You've got me. a d- Brian has the widest piss hole. I got a piss hole. Brian takes yeah. a piss. I can piss and come. He can. Be, he'll no, like he'll come and piss and do it all in around twenty seconds. Yeah. yeah. He'll do, he's told me many a tale. This of, is for you. I yeah, say this is for you, and then it's just like. It's like someone just like like if you filled like if a I'm shot a, glass if I'm in a German, and then you just went like that. If I'm in a German piss bar, for example, yeah. right? And I got of course. It, and I'm, I'm up on one of them trapezes, and I got them perverts down there. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 you piss American piss. And, yeah, and, 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 and yeah. This hey, is for yeah, you, boy. I say. Yeah, and they always Please. go, "That's a piss hole." Yeah. I don't know how you say that in German. <laughs> they say "Ich mach da eine piss hole." Yep, that's what they say. Yeah, Me, uh, uh, they they, they, they point German to their face and they go "Mit mayonnaise." Yeah, mit mayonnaise, and then yeah. I go mayo for yeah. you, mayo and then clinic. He, he can pee in like he can take like a full bladder piss in seven seconds. That's right. Because Brian's piss hole looks like you put like a like a like a like a half inch uh, rebar up his dick. All right, don't be rude. And dude. just dug around in there, so it's real. You know what I'm talking about? Rebar. You know, like the big rebar. No. Yeah, this is not a good. Rebar. This is not. This yeah, is... the diamonding starts with it, 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 the the origins of the diamonding. Start with, you know, my good pals, writer, producers, Chad Culchin and Tommy Blotchett, with whom I do the show now. And we've decided to whittle the audience down to one listener. Oh, boy. <laughs> one diamond listener. I don't understand that. Oh, it's been happening for a while, and it's getting more and more arcane. Okay. As a matter of fact, I know that some of, the, some of your listeners are people who listen to a couple podcasts, and occasionally we'll get... You know, tweets and stuff that sure. people listen to both our podcasts. Yeah. So I guess I'm and, and, only. And by the speaking... way, the, the point of a podcast is to grow it, and for you guys, you're trying to <laughs> no. diamond it down. To we're one... trying to get it down to. We're crushing it down like coal to one diamond listener. Okay, and it's real, and it's happening, and there, and something very special that I cannot reveal now will be happening. Yeah. for real with that one diamond listener. So I, I am well, not. I'm not. So you I'm can't not tell us to... what. You can't no. tell us what the reward for being the diamond listener is. No, that's going to be happening throughout the fall, and we will let let it out. But there is a very real reward. I think this is unprecedented yeah. in the world of podcasting. Yeah, and uh, and I'm not trying to say, like, hey, go check out the thing. Because, you know, every time I'm on here, like, the 10-minute podcast, and yeah. I go, and you get upset. That's not what I'm trying to do. No. What I'm trying to do is say, those of your listeners who listen to both shows, yeah. you know, who we appreciate uh, over here at The Fighter and the Kid and, and over a 10-minute podcast – 
uh, please play, please, please pay. Please. I had a stroke. Oh, no. I just oh, had shit. a stroke. Oh, Did you shit. check that? Did you see that? That's because you do drugs all the yeah, time. Yeah, because I do nothing but drugs don't and do, eat fried don't chicken. Don't do drugs and chicken. Oh, man. <laughs> Fucking drugs I haven't and trick slept chicken. In, <laughs> slept in days. Well, you gotta, hey, did you read my book? I didn't, Drugs and Chicken? I didn't read that. Not a good book. No. Um, no. It's bad. One of the worst uh, health books ever. Uh, anyway, I just want to say to the people who listen to both shows, Pay close attention to what's happening with Good the diamond. Good luck with the diamond. Oh, man. And some great shit's going to happen after it's over. Because when something dies, something else is born. Yeah. It's, it's, it's death and resurrection. It's yeah. the yin and the yang. From the ashes. From the ashes, a phoenix, a phoenix rises. will rise. Hold, speaking of ash, hold on a second. Speaking of ash in your heart, um, how is... God damn it. <laughs> You're not in the fucking Sudan, bro. We're, we're, not, we're not crossing the deserts of Namibia. Hi, 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 oh, hi, oh. That is so spiritual. Hi, 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 hi. That's what I do when I'm crossing the deserts of Namibia. I sing that song by Enya or whatever. Oh, you do? But then it's the the edge of innocence. Hi, 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 hi. Do you Remember know? That? Do you know that when you would when you would chase the Mongols when they would steal your women and your 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 stuff and they would they would kill a bunch of your brethren and then they would run back into the desert and you would mount your army right you'd oh, mount yes. your army people like you yes and then you the general, ancestors that i feel inside yeah, of yeah, my yeah. my, yeah, my fucking, sinew and you lungs fucking, you fucking uh, agricultural farmers you guys would mount you let's get the army together yeah. and you chase them into the desert you understand right. oh yeah now because you the need horde. a lot of water okay yeah. mm -hmm. you would have you'd be able to carry that water into the desert because know that there's no fucking unless you want to stick a straw into a fucking cactus yeah yank yank it in your your horses or you watered because you need a lot of water now listen mm -hmm. so you'd follow mm -hmm. the mongols in now you you can carry 24 hours of water mm -hmm. yeah. actually it, it depends i think it was actually maybe eight days of water in yeah so you're chasing them and they're hanging just out of reach Mm -hmm. just out of reach and mocking you mm -hmm. as you're like hey, nah, hey, hey. Then, hi, yeah, hi, hi, hi. your bullshit water cry and by the way <laughs> yeah. as you do that your mouth <laughs> is losing water right it's you're all not good. wrong you're not it's all wrong. good so and they they keep quiet but they just hang just out of reach but you're so furious and they got your girls and maybe they're like ha, we got your girls and you're like yep. you know um and yeah and yeah i'm coming now <laughs> Now, how come they don't have any water? Well, I'll tell you exactly why I don't have any right. water. You fucking, you watch fucking, your mouth. You watch fucking your mouth. Historical ignoramus. There's I'll tell so you many why. hard things to hit you in the I face. I understand with that, here. but just listen up. Keep your ears There's open. So and much your, shit. And your congratulations and your on mouth this. Shut. You got a thing over here in the corner. Yeah. I saw it I'm on the internet. Done. I'm not done. I know you're not done. I'm just taking a little pause to okay. say you have a wonderful thing from YouTube. Yeah. Hey, congrats on 100,000. We're 100, at 140,000 subscribers. Subscribers. Fantastic. Some more than that. I'll fucking smash your nose with that. <laughs> no. no. So go on. Good luck because I, uh, I have a good head movement. Now listen. I'll take three shots. You can miss the first two. Mm. You are not going to. All right. What's this thing? Uh, you can catch that in the I'll, head. I'll answer back to you. Catch don't, that in the fucking head. Don't I'll lift say, that up with one hand. Don't fucking threaten to cave my I'm head. I'm not in threatening me. anything. Right. Finish your story. All right, you historical ignoramus. I'll smash they, this. All right, thing. Fuck hey, this guy got in touch with me. The man who made this. Yeah. Wonderful artist, and he's going to make another one for you because I'm going to break that <laughs> into two perfect pieces on your nose. Fuck. fuck Finish fuck your it. story. So they're tapping. Oh. They're tapping the vein of their horse. Yeah, and they're living on blood, right? Yeah, okay. As as the as the horde would do. As you run out of water, yeah. you go, "Hey guys, we're four days in. We got to turn back." Right, wrong. But then you, because you go, "I'm fucking too mad." Let's fucking keep going. And they go, "Sir, Captain," and you go, "Like, like you interrupt me because be be." Yeah, what sir, sir, we, we have got... to turn back around. No, no way. I'm too angry, sir. I'm listen. Brian's version of me, and I'm angry. Okay, sir. No, we got no. We got to keep going, sir. We, if we turn, we don't turn back now. We're going to run out of water mm -hmm. the last day, so we really need to. We, I don't think we're going to catch them, and somehow they don't seem to need water. Okay, here's where you're wrong. Yeah, my my agricultural forward society. Yeah, the, my ancestors. Yeah. got along a slightly different way. We would be on the Great Plains. We would get attacked by the Mongols. Yeah, you know, a little color would happen. They would take our women. Yep. You know what I mean? Changing our bloodline. Yeah. Having said that. My ancestors, uh, w w with all the advancements they had in agriculture and also farming and animals, they crossbred two animals. I didn't know that. 
Yes. Now, careful, because I don't know if this is historically accurate. They crossbred two animals. Yeah. One animal came from the great forests, mountains, and valleys of Canada. Okay, now careful, because... All right. This is, of course, the moose. Okay, the moose. <laughs> the moose is a very fast yep. uh, animal. Yep. Stupid face, but yeah. It's got a big stupid face and a dumb nose. Dumb nose. It's a big animal. Like, don't. What? I was just saying you got I'm not a moose, bro. Well, you got a stupid nose. And so, <laughs> stupid fucking nose. Well, bro. all right. So we got the moose. The, the, what does the moose have on his head? Sticking out of his skull. Antlers. Big, huge antlers, antlers, right? We also have a species that is extinct but can be brought back what with, you know, now the advancements with DNA, you know, yeah. you, you program the RNA to tell the DNA what to do. You guys understand that. <laughs> I don't a lot understand of science that. fans that listen to the show. Okay. The woolly mammoth. And we crossbred these animals. You guys did? Or what do you mean? This you, is back in the day? The woolly moose. I don't we know. We crossbred and we would ride the woolly, woolly moose yeah. in uh, up to, you know, three adults and four children could, could ride on one. Is that true? We can put babies in the antlers. Yep. Okay. And we this would- very unsafe. Yep. And, we, and the woolly moose yeah. uh, reached up to what you would now refer to as like, you know, 90 to 100 miles per hour. In speed. In running? Yes. And now when you say I that the, so. the horde used to like tap the vein of the horse yeah. and drink, we would, we would, you want to talk about a diamond shaped piss hole. Yeah. A woolly moose has like a piss hole like that. It's yeah. like, if you do this with your hands, yeah, yeah that makes that diamond shape. Yep. Like DDP, are you doing yep. your DDP yoga? It's you don't know what I'm talking about, right? No. No, because you cover fighting here. Okay. You don't cover professional wrestling. All right. You should, DDP, the other, should at least do one episode a, week, a month on. Anyway, uh, yeah. they got a big, huge piss hole. Yeah. And we just, you know, we just drink the water. We'd go to the lake and then we'd stick our face into the, the woolly uh, moose's vagina. It's disgusting. Or so disgusting. put our face right into their dick. Yeah. And, and fill it with water. All right. And then we would, so the kids would ride on the back and scoop it with the ladle and we would have water for weeks. <laughs> so you just drink. We just drink woolly moose piss water, yeah. and we would cross across the plains, and then you the desert. Would kill the Mongols. Yeah, we would kill the Mongols. We would also cross over Russia into Alaska. Yeah, visit our Inuit friends. Yeah, back before that, closed off. Well, you went. You, you went to Nunavut. I did go to Nunavut, and, and we you covered were this around. Last re, time yeah, you were around time. real Inuits. Yeah, that's right. We shot a film up in the Arctic Circle in yeah. Nunavut, Canada. It is the uh, it's the Inuit territory. Yeah, and, and things you, are you different up eat, there. You didn't eat any raw meat because you're a pussy. No, right? I ate a little bit of raw meat. Not really. I, no, not. I ate a little bit of uh, caribou, hmm. some raw caribou. I was invited on a polar bear hunt. You didn't go. Did not go. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go either. No, I understand. It would make me sad to shoot a polar bear. Well, you know the thing is, it's twenty. There's they give away uh, in Nunavut. Uh, the agreement is tw they give away twenty contracts. You know, the government in association with the elders and this and that, and they've decided that 20 uh, polar bear, because yeah. you can't really just relegate an entire people up to here, go up there and uh, we're just going to start this whole thing down here in North America. And uh, by the way, don't eat those animals because we think they're cute. Yeah. And there's only, right. and there's four of them left. That's right. Because they're going to be like, well, we're going to eat them anyway until they're gone. That's right. And then, so 20, they got 20, a uh, contract for 20. And uh, um, Iqaluit is the capital of Nunavut, and ten of those contracts go to Iqaluit. And so we, uh, so whoa, oops. and so uh, yeah. Anyway, so one yeah. of the guys, one of our drivers, Ukpik, he had a friend who got a contract, and he said, "Would you like to come uh, polar bear hunting with us?" And I said, "No, no," nope. because I was already foreseeing that. Uh, now I don't think anyone would give a shit because I'm just me. But I was already foreseeing that, like Chris Pratt over a fallen lion no picture shit. on the internet, something like that. It's bad press. Uh, it's bad press. Now, <laughs> now did, did, can you did, imagine? Me? Like, he, like you kill him. That's not flying. Well, first Hollywood. of all, I don't want to be around In for a Hollywood. polar bear getting shot. Me neither. And I don't think any white guys should. It's like it's their thing. Yeah. Like the Inuit are doing it. Do it. Okay, yeah. fine. It's Off not you for go. whites. It's not. Not for whites. It's not for whites. Not for whites. Not for whites. Not for whites. But yes, for the Inuit. Yes, for the Inuit. Not for whites. Yes, for the Inuit. Not for whites. Yes, for the. Hold on. Ah, fuck, man. Now, do you know how the Inuit used to kill polar bear? Because they did. They this is. They were a rough group. Oh yeah. Because they would kill polar bear. Now, do you for ten points? Do you know how they used to kill polar bear? Uh okay. Uh spears. Spears, spears and and but what would they do would they would they surround the polar bear 
Yes. Good luck. No, they didn't. Oh, You're okay. not fucking coming up to a polar bear with your fucking dumb spear. You're just going to piss it off, and it's going to go, really? Haven't I seen, but haven't I seen some Inuit art with... Sure, you know, the you Inuit have. Inuit sure surrounding you have, the because the Inuit are well-known fucking liars. Hey, man, right? that's not cool. They're artistic liars. Uh, okay, I'm sitting here I'm representing my Inuit are. people of Canada. They've done studies and the First on, Nations. They've done no, they're not liars. On their hearts, Luke Pick is not a liar. Their hearts are are very black with sin <laughs> and lies. I'm just saying that's not true. I'm just telling you. What oh the, my goodness! I'm take just it telling back. you what the Discovery Channel they found that I they, don't give a shit what the Discovery so, Channel says. I'm going to get the government of Canada. Their hearts We're are made of Justin Trudeau. Their hearts. Trudeau. They did Trudeau. a study. Their hearts are made of. If you would eat a piece of Inuit heart, it would taste like you would seal. die immediately because they're no. poison. It's poison. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's terrible. I know it is. Oh, it's what a really, horrible thing to I say. I know. In fact, you can take a you can take an Inuit heart and put it out. On the ice, and animals from everywhere will 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 there a hundred miles will stay away. They will stay away from an Inuit heart. I'm just telling you what the Discovery Channel. I don't think you saw that on the Discovery Channel. I'm sure they're very nice people, but in the end, they're very nice people. They're they're liars. Very, they're very traditional people. They they're very uh, welcoming and warm people. And I just I don't believe what you say. I'm just sure they kill polar bears. I'm. But I don't think you saw that on the Discovery Channel. I, I love when people do this. They go, I believe that they're welcoming. I believe that they're good people. But I'm just telling you yeah. that their hearts. Yeah. We'll keep animals away for a hundred miles. Yeah. So what does that tell I you? don't disagree that they are the salt of the earth. Just right. wonderful people that, you know, uh, just absolutely some of the sweetest people. Yeah. But and I and I and I and I'm not saying they're not. I'm saying that they're inherently very bad people. What I'm saying, I'm saying is two things. Yeah. And you can say two things. This is like your Harold Harold goes, my buddy goes, but when I take fish oil, oh, yeah. it, it, my skin is better. And he goes I'm sure it is, but I'm telling you, fish oil is poison. <laughs> like some people can just like end the conversation. Yeah. They'll just say, "I'm I'm sure that's true that yeah. that all races to you are equal." But I'm yeah. saying they're not. Yeah, like, yeah. What? Wait, what? What? Are, what? Like what? A, what? A you weird, can't just say that. That's the dumbest high school debate team way to the, say your point. The, the, hey, I'm the, sure that everything you're saying yeah. is true, but it isn't. Yeah, but it isn't. Huh? The, the Inuit would wait till the polar bear was sleeping, oh. and and the thing would be asleep, and I guess they'd sleep somewhere, and then you'd come in there and stab the fuck out of it with your with your spear. Smart. And typically, the bone of the polar bear is very very hard, mm. so they would use the polar bear bone mm. to sharpen that shit down, and that's what they would stab seals in their faces with oh when they goodness. were in, when they came up for air. You wait till they come up there, yeah. and you go. And then in right. your face. That's a horrible way to kill it's a no seal. It's no joke, man. It is cold. It's a hard way to live. Y- yeah. You're just eating nothing but protein. There's no vegetation yep. out there. Frozen fish. Basically. Frozen fish. Well, they'd cook fish, I guess. But they got. Some... But you need seal oil or oh, whale yeah. oil. You, you got to blubber the to fat. Oh. And if you didn't get a seal that, that winter, you basically lived in the dark. Mm-hmm. You lived in the fucking dark and you're eagle. Yeah. And you yeah. had no fire, no light. Or you just go to Popeye's and get some chicken and Mm-mm. shit. Nope. Um, nope. The, uh, they eat everything like raw. They enjoy eating it raw. And they eat everything. Walrus skin? Yep. Yeah. Well, Sam, my buddy Sam Sheridan went and studied him. And he had wolf mittens, wolf fur mittens that came up to your like elbow. And they had never been cured. It was just they took the fur off. And because it's so cold, it just basically you leave them outside and you can wear yeah. those mittens. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really something to really something to behold. That movie will come out soon. It's called The Grizzlies. Oh, yeah? Yeah, anyway. What else is going on? Where's Brendan? He, uh, he is in New York doing something for Showtime. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, that's great. He's interviewing, I think, Deontay. Ah! Wow. Oh, I had the weirdest leg cramp just then. Uh, well, dude, uh, you know, man. Uh, and you fuck these little chairs, ass. man. All right, bro. Look these little fucking chairs. All right, dude. Well, you know, Brendan fits in them, so just take it yeah, easy. Yeah, Brendan's a big guy, but Brendan's not, you know, Brendan is, is uh, he's V'd out. Yeah. You know, he's he's uh, got the fucking shape in all the right places. He, yeah, he right. does have a bubble ass. Yeah. Well, right? Not, but he's not got, quite mine, but he's yeah. got narrow man hips and yeah. shit, and he's yeah. got those glutes that fucking... Yeah. Come together and just press his fucking no room for his balls. All right, man. Right? That's getting... Just... <laughs> uh, uh, huh? And then those fucking hams, those thighs. All right, man. You're getting Jesus really strangely fucking erotic Christ. about I'm this. I'm just saying Brendan's got a nice fucking set of everything. All right. And he... I'm sure he fits fine. And I see the, the show or pictures of you guys on the you know on the set. It's like, oh, everyone looks so comfortable. And then I come here and it's like I'm sitting in coach doing <laughs> a right. podcast. Um, you can't You can't fly coach. No, I can't fly coach. You fly first class. <clears throat> I fly. <clears throat> I fly cockpit. 
All right. I just go in and I sit in the corner of the cockpit. And they and can't go, get you out? I'm good. Don't worry about me. I'm not going to cause any troubles. Yeah. Yeah. And they go, all right. You know, yeah. They just sit there on the ground like a fucking giant teddy bear. You, you still got your bull heart calves. Yeah, I still got huge calves. Yeah, 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 my calves. So what's he in New York? <laughs> he's interviewing Deontay Wilder, I think. Now, I don't he's follow boxer. the fight game. As... He's, a, he's a heavyweight boxer, the best American heavyweight probably. Oh, that's awesome. Boxer. Yeah. With a bring bring Dante Wilder up. Take a look at his body if you want to talk about. You want there are two men might be the the best bodies that you can have. One would be one is interviewing a- the guy Anthony and the other guy Joshua, is getting interviewed. Anthony oh, Joshua about, and the other is is that guy. Jeez. Yeah, you don't get better looking or more symmetrical than than Dante Wilder. All right, Wilder. calm down, Brian. I mean, that's a, that's a talent. yeah. Well, that's a that's a beautiful human being. Yeah. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's simply a, he's simply a Nubian warrior. That last picture we just I saw. I would of never him. wear clothes if I he's, had that body. I would just never. I'd walk around like, look, "What's up? Look at this." Look he's at so this. casual as he beats the shit out of people. He should fuck like he should. We need him to fuck everybody because that that's just a. He's just a. He's specimen. gonna say he's gonna save the. I would the black I would one. present him with my wife. Yeah. I would present him. I would I would say, sir, you are the alpha male. I present you. Yeah. I present you with my wife. I would dollar up. Yeah. I'd dollar up and I'd go, there you go. There <laughs> you go. Then, yeah, there you go. And then I would <laughs> videotape it and watch it periodically. I would, I would, he would, he would give me a child. I would have, the child would be mine. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it would be a son. I would raise it to be a great warrior. Yeah. And, um, and I, and he, I guess, I don't know if he'd be in the child's life. He'd be, he'd be uncle Deontay. It'd be our secret. Right. It'd be, the it'd secret. be our secret. But he would look. Just exactly like, yeah. like him. Well, with my my wife's with your wife's coloring genetics, and his coloring, and his genetics. Together? Yeah, the Viking and the and the, the Nubian should child. always be breeding. We need. <laughs> That's I, why we would take our woolly moose. Yeah, we would drape them in the finest silks and velvets. Yes, and we would take our our uh, maidens. Yes, and your put, maidens. Yes, and we would put them in the antlers. Of the woolly moose. Yeah. I don't know if this is historically and we would, accurate. We would just walk them. We would just walk them right into Africa. Right. And we and then, would be like, ego, 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 <laughs> ego, ego. And then I would watch. Have her video, back I would watch in the video tape periodically, and I would ego. cry. I would, I would cry and hit myself. You punch yourself. Uh huh. The and then I would, uh, and then I'd be mean to my wife because I would feel inadequate, and, I would, <laughs> and it would tear our family asunder. But, but I'd have a fucking great kid yeah. out of it. You'd also have a huge heart on because it would turn you on. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I got problems. Yeah, and that's yes, right. it would. It would. It, there'd be a deep perversion yeah. that people would see that lives in my heart. Yeah. Which then, is to be outclassed. It's called sperm competition. <laughs> that's what it's called. The Discovery Channel did a thing on that. They where, did not. Yeah, where you see another man in there and apparently your penis is shaped with the hood so you get the other sperm out and you get your sperm in. That, yeah. That's a theory. Yeah. And I, I subscribe to it wholeheartedly. Do you ever just go into your backyard and snap off a twig or a branch, put it into your piss hole and beat off? Bro, that's not a question I think is appropriate for <laughs> Whatever, man. Show. It's no rules. And it's the, the man, is, the fighter, and the kid. The answer is, of course not. So, did you Now, did you know oh boy. that recently, <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you knew this, uh-huh. Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather Jr. Yeah. fought Conor McGregor. Yeah. Conor McGregor. Yeah, this is old news. In a fight. Yes, we know that. No, it's not. It just happened. Nope. Right. Okay. Like Go last on. weekend. All right. Now, did Couple you, weekends, now, yeah. m- perhaps some of your listeners yeah. would like to hear about your thoughts on the fight? Nope, because we've covered this ad nauseum, and you are not qualified to talk about it. So oh, you know I'm what? Already let me, let me tell you, I sure am not. Yeah. Because I watched the fight. Yeah. I didn't know... I, Everyone talked so much about the fight. I I particularly took in a lot of what you guys had to say about it. I was really fascinated by what Brendan had to say about it, and like uh, it's just his outlying opinion of of it, which was, in my opinion, you know, proven. The guy, you know, he fucking hung out. He fucking hung out. Yeah, uh, he hung out. That guy. I mean, I was, I, you know, I was for Connor. I was like, oh, I think he's gonna do it. And then everyone watches it, and then you know, I'm up with my buddies in Canada. And then it's over, and then everybody has an opinion. Of course. And that's annoying what, to what's, me. What makes Floyd just, so good? Just shut up yeah. when it's over. Everybody wants to Because now it's over. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I knew it. You know, I mean, a guy, a boxer, that guy, he's 50 and 0. He's like the greatest thing. I had to, like, sit there and listen to my buddies go. A couple of them are probably listening right now. My pal Mark listens to every show. Hey, Mark. Actually, Mark wasn't over at our other pal Jamie's watching the fight. So uh, and Mark is absolved of this. But, yeah, he should have thing. Of course he won't. 
Of course you want to do. Yeah, everybody's got a Never point Never been view. punched. Oh, yeah, right. I know. Everybody's got a point of view. Yeah. But what makes Floyd so good is that he fought him in a way that he's never fought anybody. If he had wanted to sit on his back foot and get out of the way and make Connor miss the whole time, the way he did to everybody like Canelo and to Manny Pacquiao, Connor obviously would have had a very hard time even laying a glove on him, but he didn't want that press. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to stand in your grill. I'm going to keep my weight on my front foot and I'm going to fight you the way I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to walk you down and fight you. Is that what happened? Yes. And then, uh, you know, he's winking at his dad in the corner. But Connor, you know, you got to give Connor credit because when sure. Floyd sat there and fought him, Connor put his hands on his face. Yeah. But Connor, but Floyd said, look, you guys know if I wanted to box him the way I box people, it would have been a very different event. Interesting. But he's so good that he can change his style, essentially, and go, all right, let me see your your power. You're a bigger man. I got you. You, you throw it, throw all your stuff at me. Yeah. Good stuff. And now, uh, and now I'm going to just knock you out. There's a rumor that he put... 400 grand on himself to take Connor out in the 10th round, which I can believe because he's that good. I can believe that. What makes guys like that so good is they can download your whole game plan. That's you see, you can just download everything you're doing. And that's the what? difference between you and me. You know, all this stuff and it's great. Yeah. And, I, and I download everything and you do. And I've watched wrestling since yeah. I was like seven. Yeah. Which yeah. is also fi- so. Before you it's tell also the story, fighting. You it's tell also the story. fighting. So already, fuck you. Already yeah. in a fight, hey, fuck you. I say to you because I got no respect. But keep going. Well, I don't know anything about actually wrestling. Right. I don't know. I'm just no. saying I watch it. No, or boxing. No. Or yeah, but you or my feet. Yeah, but you jump around. You jump around head. in a gym, right? Don't say jump around. You jump around in a gym. I don't jump. I move. Yeah, you do. I move. I catch angles. No, no, no. You put on House of Pain and you jump around. No, no. And you jump around in there. No. no. And uh, no. fucking uh, you and Tony, right? What's no. His? Wayne McCulloch, the great Wayne McCulloch. All right. So you jump around and he pretend he throws, you know, the focus pads and you're like, remember this. Do do it like this. Hip it pet pet. Hip it pet pet. No. Hip it pet pet. Like yeah. a three year old would just go. Or you know when girls teach each other patty cake. No, that's not what it looks like. That's what no. It's exactly what it looks like. Well, no, not let's play patty cake. When I turn my when I turn my punches over, when I sit down on my punches, yeah. When I sit down, you ever hear a gun go off? Yes. Bang 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 bang. Yeah, that's not what your punches sound. Who who who's shooting the machine gun? They say. That's what I'm just saying. Who's when, off in the distance? When shooting people a hear gun? when they're when they're behind the closed door of my gym, right? And I'm working, yeah. And I'm putting in work, as we say in the Ugh. fight game, yeah. But then you, but you shouldn't say that. But well, that's what they say. Well, you don't deserve to say that, right. and I'm just saying that. But when I put in work, yeah, they go. And I got a funny story about this. They go, "Who's shooting the machine gun?" By the way, what, what I love about boxing, and when you're an actor like me, and you're 50, mm-hmm. and you, you're right hop around a ring yeah. and maybe i spar with headgear with a guy who's really never boxed before right. and i still get hit and and you know maybe i get the best of him because he hasn't been doing it this long or maybe he's just not very athletic um what will happen is you you will um trainers when they're talking to somebody else in front of you you know what they'll say it's what? great and of course they know better and they'll say they'll say to make you feel good and look good they'll go bro this guy's got skills he can box Aww. and of course i of course I can't. Right. Of course I can't. And 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 I know what they're doing. Right. But it's very common for them to give you props even if you suck. Right. And it's almost like a if a, they're it's a, I don't know what it is, but there's almost a thing for that in in that where they'll mm. just be like, bro, he's got skills. He can move around. Well, now, a, of course, they're keeping it positive. They're keeping it. They're positive. in the gym. Put me in everyone's the gym having with a good a guy, time. A good amateur, and I yeah. get knocked out. Nah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I will tell you this: yeah. for all the I things do. you know about boxing. And like I said, you hop and skip around a gym, yep. and you hip 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 yep. hip hip yep. hip hip hip. Yep. Uh, I don't know anything about the actual uh, act of of uh, professional wrestling or how any of it works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Physically, I don't know. I just watch it on TV. You know, I'm kind of a fan. I've always been a fan. But I tell you what, mm. if I had Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard holding you out at the wrists and ankles, okay. and I came off the second rope with my knee yeah. and drove it right into your shin, yeah. your leg would break. Okay. And then I would wear a t-shirt that says, I broke Brian Callen's leg. Okay. And I would also like to say that if there are any listeners of the aforementioned 10 Minute Podcast and The Fighter and the Kid who listen to both shows and appreciate both bro- bro- shows. Both shows. Well, when we're talking bro- about The Fighter and the Kid, there's both shows. <laughs> yep. Uh, I would like for you to please... Uh, Please Photoshop a picture of me wearing a T-shirt that says, 
I broke Brian okay. Callen's leg. I don't need you going out to the <laughs> or, fans like or, this. Because I'm going to tell you this. Or you can make a uh, Photoshop of Brian wearing a t-shirt that says, Will Sasso broke my yeah, leg. Yeah, but see, excuse me. And no, hold on. Chant, you guys are going to share it all no, over the internet. you're forgetting something. I'm good friends great. with Goldberg. Yeah, yeah, Bill Goldberg, wonderful, he's wonderful buddy. man, and he him. just had a run. He won the universal title. He's my. You don't, you don't know any of this so, stuff. You had him on the show. You don't know what the heck to ask him. Okay, well, at all. Okay, you well, know, take it easy. But Brent, but Brendan, Brendan does because also uh, Bill Goldberg is a fan of the fight game. Yep, he loves uh, MMA Muay Thai. and stuff like that. Muay Thai he trains. Yeah. He's been training for years. Yeah, he'll beat the shit out of most people. He will beat the shit, including you. Well. Okay, I'm not going to say he's not. I'm not going to say he's yeah, not. He'll beat the shit out of you right, while well, talking to me. Okay, well, literally while ordering food. You know <laughs> hey, that, man, right? that's very disrespectful. <laughs> you know that, right? Don't whistle well, when you talk to me. Listen no, up, man, listen we're not going to get listen into listen that. While we're having a nice food. time today. While he orders food. I don't want to get bang. all. Well, I'm talking. Pe- all right, stop whistling right saying. now. I will get upset, and you will catch things in the face. There's lights, and there's pictures, and this thing here. My water is large, and the table is heavy. Fucking, that water is so stupid. Watch this. It's literally the biggest thing. You could use that as a weapon, or as a doorstop, or as, um, like, dude. Okay, listen. This is what the, you could use that water for. You know on a spaceship, when the door's going to close because they have to seal it? And because the alien's coming and right. you, you're going to be locked in and you're going to yeah. die. I could, I like, and it's hot, it's fucking like it's a steel door. Yeah. I could put that in front of that steel door and yeah. I'd be able to squeeze through. This would be, the, yeah, this would be the, the stars of the movie. Like, yeah, and Can't, just like yeah. it holds the door open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bill, Gold, Bill Goldberg has a gray goatee, which may lure you in and go, oh, he's got a silver beard but he's older he he's he's older he's you guys are probably around the same age maybe he's 50 he's probably exactly oh, 50, really, he's, 50 oh wow okay both 50 um half a century but old. then he takes his shirt off yeah. right and then it's a different thing yeah he's an athlete i would love nothing more than for guys athlete. who have made their name as professional wrestling and certainly bill goldberg's you know done all sorts of things and you know hosted television done many things with his career but i like i would love for guys who have made their name uh in uh sports entertainment or whatever you want to call it to just go out and uh beat people up like uh mm-hmm. like it used to be in the 70s yeah when you they know just beat you up when tully blanchard and Arn anderson would spread brian callen no. out by the wrists and ankles no. and Not i would me. jump off the second seven no. rope with my knee no and put it right in your shin no. and break no. your, your shin and take your bones and go uh, hunt, go I'll seal say- hunting with your bones uh. <laughs> seal hunting with brian callen's bones no, no. No. Would you, if you ever, no. heaven forbid, had to lose an appendage? Yeah. Would you let me have the bones? I, I. So I could make a necklace or fuck you a and, knife. No, no, fuck you. But no, I how wouldn't. cool would that be? Now listen. If you lost your foot, like let's say, well, sometime, first of all, what I'm would always you, like, hey, I go to my doctor. I'm like, do I straight up have like so much diabetes? You yeah. know what's well, going would on? Would you rather lose from the knee down or from the elbow down? Uh, I, I, oh, for me, it's knee down. With respect to everybody who, who has had to make that decision. Yeah. No, actually, nobody's ever had to make that decision. But then, with respect yeah. to people who've had one or the other or both. Well, because uh, I, know, I know some guys and veterans, and yeah. I'm sure you do, Nate, who've lost. Nate was a Marine for oh, seven wow. years, so shut the fuck up. All right. He's so, over there all quiet. But, but, but sh- you shut the fuck <laughs> up. Thank you very that's, much for that's your a service. Patriot. Oh, thank you. That's yeah, a patriot. I appreciate it. I and, do and appreciate he's it. A, he's a badass. That. He's a yeah. badass dog He's trainer. over there. He's over there. What's your dog? What's your, what's your company? You He's over here like just like the like the sweetest pit bull. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, like he's got, he's got a set of arms on him. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, come I'm over not, here. Come over. Get on the mic. For I'm a second, not man. lying. Brian Man Crush Callen's got something to say to you. He yeah. now this guy could choke me out. Yeah, yeah. In in about three seconds. Yeah. He's right. A, and he's and good. Reach he's into a looker my too. Hole. Yeah, he's, a, he's a looker too. Of course, of course he is. That's he, the first he came thing. in to train my dogs and my wife and my daughter. Yeah. My wife and my daughter got all. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. Yeah. So I had to discipline both of them. They were both sent to their fucking They're, room. I'm sure they were really happy. Both to have sent to their room. And then there are pictures of him, and and all my wife's friends were like, "Well, I want him to train my dog." Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. And then I had to, I had to make a rumor. I, I noticed there's say, no wedding ring. On I had that. to say, no, he's he's got a girl, but he's no no wedding ring. Okay, no so that's ring, enough yeah, for. No. But but I'm saying yeah. the pictures. That are sent to Amanda's friends. Yeah. They see no one. Oh, that's right. And they're just like, oh, I would like for him to come over and train my dog. That's right. And I'm doing air quotes. <laughs> yep. For those of you yep. listening, train my dog. Yep. yep. Train which my means dog. Something must something else. That's right. That's right. Like discipline me and, and teach yeah. me how to be 
Well, or, anyway. Or chew them. There's a lot of discipline that's involved in the dog training community as well, for sure. There is, right? But contrary to the popular belief, it's not about making a submissive dog, which I always try to tell people. It's about confidence. Like, when you came in here, confidence was through the roof. Thank you. Through the roof. Thank you very much. I, and tell us, away. Tell us appreciate how, that. Tell you know, us how a lot you, of people don't say that about me. Nah, really, fuck this I really guy. do appreciate it. Fuck people this think, guy. People see me... Roll into a room and bang things with my knee, oh. and they go sit down, shut up, sit down, oh. dummy. Nobody sit down there. You. Yeah, you did. No, come but on. he knows. No, I come in <laughs> here. I almost knocked everybody over. Yeah, you know, with the setup and everything's very. You, you know, with this kind of electrical, with this kind of equipment, you can't be knocking shit over. I no. do it all the time with my stuff, and I'm banging my knees off of things, and that's yeah. what's up. Yeah, it's confidence. Yeah, Nate, Nate'll teach you how to. Like he'll teach a dog. How to bark but not bite and and, oh. and look fierce as shit. Tell us how you do that with a dog. It's pretty fascinating. As like, far as teaching a dog how to be just just getting a dog. Uh, if I want a dog to just look really mean and bark up a storm when but it, not when bite, a, not bite when an intruder comes in. Tell us how you do that. So like an alert command, right? Yeah. So everything when it comes to working with a dog, though, is showing them the behavior you want them to perform and then giving them some sort of value back for that behavior. Oh. Yeah. So with a dog, uh, if somebody wants a dog to show a strong appearance and be yeah. that deterrent factor, then what you do is you basically show the dog that when they become confident, the bad guy goes away. Yeah. So we'll have somebody come around the side and the dog's you know on a leash so he can't go attack the person because that would be bad. And you put up this strong front. And the second the dog barks, you act like that bark is like a super bark from the movie Bolt. Oh. So the dog barks and you're like, oh, like you just were hit by that bark. And the dog goes, holy crap. I could bark you away from me. And the more you do it, the higher their confidence comes. And then we want to put it on a command. We tell the owner, we say, hey, what you're going to say is whatever you want your command to be. So you want it to be easy or alert or whatever. Yeah, or they fuck, say fuck that command. Or something. Right, right. Yeah, fuck and the, will. The, <laughs> you're not telling the dog to fuck people. No, no but I, that would be my command. Well, easy is good because yeah. you could play the role like, I was telling the dog easy, easy, yeah. relax, oh. buddy, right? right? So when they say easy, then you come out as the bad guy. Dog barks at you after enough of those becomes a pattern that the dog recognizes and when the owner says easy dog goes bad guys coming and starts barking right and then so, so when the cops come around later they say everyone was he was telling the dog easy easy right it's not his fault that's and the cops are like oh wow this guy's laying here like a bunch of taco meat and it's not you know it's that's, not nate's fault he was saying <laughs> easy easy then they take the dog away and you get another well dog. those that's, are those are perfect for dogs when you don't want them to bite oh okay right yeah. it's just that deterrent because most people see that vicious dog barking right. barking they're gonna back yeah. off so that's what no. we do with so, brian so, when so brian what? starts barking nope. he's like i'm this i'm that <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope, <laughs> and i fight and i box it pip, pip, pip. Well, and we go that. oh 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 brian you're so strong oh and brendan's like i'm a fucking world-class fighter but oh my 50 year old friend Bar brian hopping around the gym oh yeah it's but funny. here's the thing you find, you find weapons of opportunity though <laughs> yeah i already noticed that about you that's what they talk about in the marine corps weapons of opportunity yeah you're talking about yeah the subscriber, he, he walks in, he walks in, and he's got his table. weapons. Everything yeah. is a weapon. To I'm looking, Everything I'm looking around. Look, I'm a, I'm a big guy, can handle myself. You know, I can just, I can run into people and mash them against walls. I can <laughs> hug them too tight and yep. cry. Yep. Ooh, ooh. But, then they but another thing is, I'm wiry. If it's not nailed down, you're catching it in the fucking head. Whoa. You better That's watch bad. out. If you got like Whoa. a big rotary right. phone, the kind of things that are in a room in 2017. Yeah. A rotary phone, nothing there. A uh, fax machine, nope. a turntable, <laughs> a turntable, yeah, yeah, shit uh, like that. A cannon, yeah, a uh, cannon, yep, a big yep. mixer, a big uh, electric mixer, a reaching kit, photo next yeah, to you, an ice box, yep, uh, yep. any of these things yep. that would be in a room. A Geiger counter, counter, <laughs> uh, a fucking, <laughs> a fucking, <laughs> a Geiger counter. An abacus. If you let me ask you this, I know that so so Nate's got his own show uh, on Discover, on uh, Animal Planet called. Uh, from Rescue Dog to Super Dog. Cool. What's the name of your, if people, like, what's the name of your dog training company? Uh, well, I have Hira's Legacy Foundation, which is a nonprofit. Hira's Legacy Foundation. Yes. Nonprofit. Named right. after my dog. If I, way. okay, so yes. if I wanted to, he's got Malinois bite you in the fucking, in your uh, Canadian. <laughs> Whatever. Well, you know, Canadian I actually dick. saw you a, about a month or so ago at the uh, TCA event. What oh, doing, okay. What was he doing? Yeah. Sucking on dough? I, oh, he was walking around. I want to say hi, but I'm like, oh, I don't want to be that guy who comes over and, you know, I'm sure yeah. you get enough people coming up. No, and nobody, 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 nobody recognizes Well, him. no, people do. They just don't want to say yeah, anything because they don't want to be that him. guy. Oh, come on. You, know? uh, you were great in the 80s or where the fuck you did <laughs> you know, you know what I was there for at the TCAs? What? Louder Milk coming to the Audience Network and Direct TV now on October 17th. Louder Milk. Louder Milk. Man. With Ron Livingston and Will Sasso. That's right, guys. It's Louder Milk, October 17th or 18th. Walk, don't I think run. it's the 17th. Louder Milk, 
on the AT&T's uh, audience network. Yeah, and if you miss it, well, it's their banner if, network. If you miss that they, show, oh well. They bought uh, nope, they bought Direct TV. Uh, if you miss They're it, rolling if you out miss it, Louder watch milk. anything else. Uh, hey, you know, there's a guy named Ron Livingston who's about the height, age, weight and look of Brian Callen. Yep. Way more talented. Nope. And he's with Will Sasso on Louder Milk. Yeah. Thanks for the advertisement. That's great. <laughs> if I if, if I if I gave you a million dollars and I said Nate, and I'm being serious with this question. I have this Malinois. I want to be able to have it Malamar? by Will Malinois. What's I want ma- it to have like the Malamar, it's a, it's like a Malamar. chocolate it's, cookie it's with the Dutch marshmallow. Shepherd. It's a Dutch you Shepherd. Want to pull up a it's a Dutch so chocolate. Nice. It's a Dutch Shepherd. Is that the marshmallow chocolate? It's, it's a Dutch Shepherd. Is that a, it's a Samoa M- like M-A-L-I-N-O-U-S. a Girl Scout O-U-S. cookie? Oh, Malamar. O U S. How would could you train a dog to bite somebody somewhere specific? O I S, not O U S. Could you train a dog to have have him bite somewhere somebody somewhere specific? Yeah, well, if you gave me a million dollars to train the most perfect dog for you, I would hire better trainers than me, <laughs> and then I would keep. <laughs> That's good. All right, that makes sense. But yeah, incredible dog, beautiful. And you know, when you guys were talking about what part of the leg or arm or whatever, there was. Uh, Actually, somebody on the show, Rescue Dog to Super Dog, where she had a rock climbing accident and she fell from about 40 feet and lost one of her legs. Oh, and geez. so we trained a dog for her to turn on and off the light switch to retrieve items for her. Wow. It was really cool. The dog would actually run down the hallway and press the elevator button for her because she had this long hallway and she had the accident before or uh, after she'd already been in that location. How the fuck did you location. teach a dog to do that? Uh, well, it's, you know, like anything else, you break it down to the smallest pieces and then you put it together for the final product. Wow. So I just taught the dog to target a sticky pad. So every time he touched the sticky pad, I rewarded him for that. And then I moved the sticky pad closer and closer to the light switch or the elevator button. Yeah. And then eventually the sticky pad's gone, but the dog still does the behavior hoping for a reward. And this little guy would come cruising around the corner, jump up and hit that elevator button. Ah, oh, it was adorable. adorable. So, if I, so, so I could, if I showed, <laughs> if I showed a dog... A picture of Will's nub, because he's got a nub. I got a little, a tiny... A little nub. A nub. Maybe, like maybe a, the smell yeah, would help. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, smell. it smells bad, <laughs> and, that, and, and that it looks shitty like... shitty little... Like, he, it looks it like, 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 like a... Have like like you ever seen, like, chicken gizzards in the, in the, uh, yep. in the grocery Dogs store? Love those, yeah. And there's, like, a big pack of them for, like, $2.50? Yeah. Perfect. Just grab one of them out, throw it away. That little dickhead. Yeah. That's kind of like what my That's nub what looks like. Let it sit for a few days. discolored. And just reward him every time Every time he comes close... And then he bites you in the dong. <laughs> now, um, all right. Well, thank you, Nate. We but I got a heavy that. bag. Definitely. Should I? All right. No, stay Shift there. Over, stay there. You know. uh, that is a beautiful dog. <laughs> they're incredible. They're they're really, uh, really driven dogs, but they're definitely not for an inexperienced dog owner. You need either, they're not for a family, right? You either need experience or you need to be working with somebody who's experienced. Yeah, because I told you, Sorry. I was saying you... Sooner or later, you're going to have our friend Katie Mixon on the show. Yeah, got to yeah, have her Yeah, yeah, you got to have Katie Mixon, who's uh, uh, American Housewife is her show on ABC. And uh, I'm buddies with her and, and her husband, Bro Greer, uh, who's a former Olympian. We're talking about him on the show. Yeah. Uh, but I, there's a dog that they have. They have a couple of these dogs. What can you tell us about this? Because I was they have a 190-pound Presa Canario oh, and Jesus. then another one that's like 170 pounds. They scare pounds. me. So these dogs, dogs very I mean, powerful. just terrifying to be around yeah. sweetie pies yeah and until they kill you i mean well was, they're lion hunting dogs right well pretzel canaries i think i believe are basically a combination of a mastiff and mm-hmm. they're, they're, i they're, mean they're they're powerful dogs and there are people that actually train <laughs> these dogs for some of the uh, protection sports out there and this would be considered an off breed for the sport you know most people use the german shepherd or the malinois yeah. or the dutch shepherd but i have seen people work with these dogs and use them for Whoa. competitive obedience and training uh, protection training. It's a fucking lion, dude. They, yeah, they, it's a big dog. These are the dogs, they dude. are powerful, definitely. Now, could you train? Here's what I'm getting at. Could you train God, four Presa Canarios to take the place of, let's say, the you know, put them in the sort of modify the wheel wells of a smaller car, like a Fiat uh, <laughs> or a smart car with one chair in the middle? Because yeah. again, we don't like these coach no. seats. No, with a, like a nice, like a nice throne, maybe some regal looking uh, leather and wood, like yeah. my headboard at home, yeah. regal big comfy chair for me to just go around my neighborhood 
go grocery shopping mm -hmm. with four press of canarios, mm -hmm. sort of like you and know, they just walk next to you. No, they no they carry the cab they of this <laughs> yeah, yeah, smart that, car. Yeah, that's a pack, and that's a dangerous. I, I is I, that possible? I am afraid of. I love. I've had pit bulls my whole life. Possibly possible. I'm afraid of a dog that <laughs> big because do I don't it. know how I would control 160. Look, look at that. Look at the picture of the press yeah. canario fighting the bear. Well, it's not. You real. You see that over on the far right? It ain't real. It's totally real. Bear will kill a uh, over to, there. Bear, it is. bear will eat a press. Look canario. at that. That's a real picture nope, nope. someone should someone should nope. photoshop a t-shirt onto that bear that says i broke brian Callum's nope. leg no that's not true someone please nope. I photoshop a t-shirt no. onto that bear that, that says no nope. i broke brian Callum's leg no nope. could you somehow put this picture out to the people anyway it's the only picture of a bear fighting a press of canario on the internet the press canario has got a a chain around its neck that's brian no and then the well, bear's I, swatting it i have a i do stand up to larger yeah animals and i will fight you do you, you do stand-up um, comedy for larger what animals? do you think of press canarios that's a dangerous i mean not they're, they're very friendly dogs but i just worry about i worry about those specific breeds that ha don't that that where you don't know who's been breeding them, mm -hmm. and they're kind of still a rare dog. So you, you're there's always that unpredictable factor. Like not in the dog. The dogs are friendly. Yeah, you can train them to bite the fuck out of people. But for the most part, I just they're so powerful yeah. that I worry yeah, I about mean, a dog like I, yeah, that. yeah, a dog like that. I would basically do a lot of fun obedience with that dog. I want everything to be fun, enjoyable, yeah. entertaining. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. You know, a lot of times when you have a dog, people have come up to me and they said, hey, can you do this protection training for my dog? And it's like, well, you really don't need that because a dog a lot of times is a deterrent. Yeah. And you don't want to be put in a position where you have this liability now. Not a dog You like go that. somewhere and, yeah. you know, someone goes and pets a dog because everybody does that when yeah. you have a dog out in, in, the, in town. Yeah. Someone goes and pets it. You're not watching. You're talking on the phone or whatever. Now you have this, this problem. So... Uh, you know, a lot of times something like that, I want to have fun with that dog and yeah. show them that the world is a pleasant, awesome place. Yeah. And nobody's going to mess with the dog that big anyways. Yeah, that's true. No. You know, if you and come I'm not into a somebody's dog. house, you know, what? if you come into somebody's house who has a press canario, yeah, you, you, you have a machine gun. Yeah. yeah I mean, now you go the other way. Well, they, 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 they said that this guy said, look, if, if a guy's going to come through your barking dog and you have a big shepherd, you have a press canario, you, he has a gun. He, mm. He's in there to kill you. Right. And. He's a professional. You better have. You better be waiting on the other side of that dog oh, with a gun. Yeah. Talking about that, here's something really interesting. One of my previous landlords, her uh, husband, used to do photography, or I don't know what the terminology for this would be, but he would take photos of homicide scenes in oh, okay. Los Angeles. Yeah. And every single scene that he had been to, they never owned a dog. Wow. So a dog was like an incredibly huge deterrent because most people, if they're going to rob a place. They want to get in when no one's there, get what yep. they want, and leave. And most yep. people like dogs. I want yep. French so they don't bulldog. Want to. I love French bulldog puppies. They look like babies. French bulldogs so are would adorable. A cute little French bulldog <laughs> keep me from getting murdered in the night? No. Well, you may. Uh, no, I mean, it might bark, not, though. The dog's going to be incredibly adorable, right? Yep. And nobody's going to want to hurt that dog. They're going to go you, to the next house. Dude, dude my German him? Shepherd, I grabbed my daughter and she screamed. I was, I was tickling her. My German Shepherd uh, bit me on the, on the calf. She, he, she just went <laughs> boop. And I went, whoa. And she goes, hey. Stop that. Probably play. Believe. It was probably play. Well, she got, I think it felt She's like she was sweetheart. also protecting. She was like, mm, like that. Mm. And I went, oh, she, it was like a warning. It was really interesting. Wow. Now, could we, could we train a press of canario <laughs> to have a cute <laughs> little, <laughs> could we train a, a, a big press canario to have a cute little French bulldog bark so that uh, would be. Uh, lure them in, you mean? Lure in the criminals yeah. so that they can tear them to shreds. Yeah, yeah you could, you'd be surprised at what you could teach. That makes me think one of my uh, friends, she has a Malinois. And she taught the dog to whisper. What? So she would say whisper and the dog would basically whisper back. It'd be a very soft How little. How the fuck do you do that? You got to ask her. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's rewarding behaviors that the dogs do maybe naturally. Anyway, yeah. Right. So you teach the dog. So when the dog marker. sneezes, for example. You right. You treat, can reward you that. Go, good yep. sneeze. And then after a while, they start to associate sneeze. With yeah. reward. With, with, and they'll sneeze. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. say good sneeze, though. I would use whatever the dog's marker is. So oh. like a yes or a clicker or something like that. So the moment the dog does that sound, she marked it and continued to do it until it became a behavior that the dog offered up. And then she yeah. just named it. Caesar Milan said so. he used to train. He had to train the people first. It's Sometimes. always people. Yeah, definitely. It's not the dog. It's always... A lot of times the dogs can figure it out pretty quickly. You take somebody who's an incredible dog handler and they can make a dog that's not so well-trained look phenomenal. And yeah. you can take somebody who knows nothing about handling a dog and it's going to make a dog who's well-trained look like it's poorly trained. Yeah. Wow. So a lot of times it is more important to know what to do. I tell people all the time, dog training is not easy... Or, Rather, dog training is not difficult once you know what you're supposed to do. And a lot of times I'm afraid people are going to figure out how easy it is and I'm not going to have a job anymore. 
Yeah. People are like, ah, oh, we don't need to hire a dog trainer. This is easy. Nah, it's not easy. It's <laughs> subtle. It's subtle. No, nah, you need it because there's pussies like Brian who no, don't know what to do with their say own that. dog. Don't say that. So you got to. He I actually speak. knew a lot about dog training when we first started working together. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was. Impressed. Oh, did you do some reading? Nope, dude. Yeah, you're going to drop some knowledge nope. about dogs? Nope. Had dogs my whole fucking life. So. Oh, oh, Well, you wow, also talked oh. about training a bear, a I think, on your podcast before. You are talking about, about because... clicker training with a bear. Yes. You're not training this read, bear. Read, <laughs> get, get, Big get, teddy bear. Yep. No. No. No swatting. No swat. No swatting. No swatting. No swatting. You got to hit the bear. Ah, fuck. No swatting. No, gentle. No, 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 no eating your poo. No eating your own poo. No eating your own poo. So you have to hit them when they eat their own poo. Or they they take their paw to their nub. When they they start to paw their nub, you don't let them When they paw their nub, or they try to eat their own poo. No. It's cold up there in the Arctic. So (laughs) every once in a while, polar bear's got to eat a nice big handful of shit and go to sleep. That's right. So those Inuit can sneak up on it and stab it in the face with its own bones. That's why See, and romping, most, stomping, homo sapiens. We take what we want and we eat your flesh. Most bears are not like Will, though, and we'll let you correct them. Most bears, are, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, they, that's what they, you do not tell a bear what to do. Right. You reward their behavior, and as they're moving in that direction, you say, "Good job," and I, so they start to mark good behavior or your commands with with getting a reward right. you don't they start to you don't go out. you don't go hey no and hit them in the face although I, there was that guy who got in trouble he I'll was training bear, chimpanzees I'll, he was training the, the, the sheep no you I'll wouldn't t- i'll tell well. bear what to no, do no you wouldn't well yeah, yeah, I'd tell. <laughs> yeah. No, very you wouldn't. nicely he would I'm but sure. with, with chimpanzees the chimpanzees don't say it like that well, bring up a bring up a hairless chimpanzee please just so say chimp or chimpanzee don't say chimpanzee i speak french and so um, uh, avec Did you le, learn the word? Mais c'est, 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 un, euh, c'est un similien, c'est très très fort. Regardez là, là-bas. Uh, look at that. Yeah. Take a look yeah. at there. Yeah, just just click on that and then just keep going. That these are chimps that had allergies. They're full grown animals. Now take a look at the arms on that bad yeah. boy. It looks the like balls. the Emilianenko yeah, brothers' like dad. <laughs> Or something yeah, like that. Looks like, that actually looks like my dad, my sweetheart dad. He That's will what pull he looks your like. fucking head off your, literally yeah. off your body. This trainer said, this woman in San Diego Zoo, I showed her that. She goes, yeah, he'll pull your head off your, your, your body. Uh, look at that. It looks there. like a look statue. At the ball bags. Yeah, that, look at that. Look at how close set those shoulders are. And good luck. Good luck when he brings you close. Yeah, yeah that's why you never your put yourself off. in that situation. No. <laughs> why does he? He's got the balls and dick like me. I got, he's got the little chicken gizzard. Yeah, dick. they don't. They don't have dicks. <laughs> they have no dicks. But his fingers, his fingers and hands balls. are built for cruelty. They're built yeah. for cruelty and to break and pull things apart. Mm-hmm. Um, that's our close ancestor. Yep. And uh, what 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 this guy was doing? He was training the chimps and he was punching them in oh the my. face for real. And they were like, dude. And he goes, look, these things are like bam, bam. This is how I train him. There's got to be a better way to train a chimp. Uh, he got in big trouble for it. He was a trainer for Hollywood. I mean, I, I'm going to stick with dogs. Yeah. I yeah. know them. I like them. They're great. Chimps, I'm not worried about I, a dog ripping you, my arm you, I've all bullshit yeah. aside. If you've been, I've been on a set where they had full-grown <laughs> hey, chimps. Hey, and we hey were, Nate. You you are a, a mechanic for uh, semi trucks and uh, Class C vehicles. What do you think of this submarine? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about a nuclear submarine. <laughs> yeah, but we punched it in the. I don't just don't do it. I don't know. I got to work on these trucks. What are you talking about? Hey, check out the submarine here. You want to get inside it and fuck around? No, it'll blow up or sl- slam into something or go way down into the ocean. Our fucking chest will explode. What are you talking yeah. about? Well, I know a guy who punched it. Yeah, that's well. You're right. So stick to stick to dogs. Stick to what you know. Unless you know about chimpanzees. Well, yeah, I mean, you were at least having a good comparison, though, as far as utilizing positive reinforcement, though, to teach somebody to do something that you want repeated. Yeah. Right. So you're saying so that was a good comparison. And because and we were talking about bears as well. Yeah. You can't use any sort of corrections to get a bear to do something because nope. he's just going to throw you across the room. That's right. You have to get him to want to do the behaviors by rewarding with positive reinforcement. Yeah. And that would be the same with that. I would not want one of those angry with me. Not not by any. Once you go ahead and eat a oh. sweet fish. There you go. You, there you go. Oh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> I always keep him happy with the candy. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Good boy. That was good sweet fish. You're good boy. Oh, sweet fish. Anyway, you do you have a dog now, though? Paws up? No, I don't have a dog now. There you go. Oh, you got to get yourself, get yourself that little Frenchie. I'll train it for you. you rub your paws really? Together? Rub your paws together. Oh, you I would love a Frenchie. That would be amazing. Mm-hmm. I think they're such cute dogs. Yeah, one of my last roommates had a Frenchie, and the dog was adorable. There you go. Mm-hmm. 
Plus, you can even do, if you want, you can do bite work with a Frenchie. Really? I watched. Don't bite yeah. my finger. You can. They love it. Don't they love the mic. toys. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. That's bad. So when he takes his paws to his nub like that, I got to say no. Good job. Now, now, uh, mash it. No, no, hey. Now, mash your face together. A good boy. I'm going to get you another sweet fish there. <laughs> warm. And we'll Look, he's repeating out. the behavior. This is now beautiful. Go ahead. No, go ahead and, and, and stick a couple digits up your shitter there. And, uh, just humiliate yourself. Humiliate yourself. <laughs> I'm a fucking bear. Humiliate yourself. That's it. There's a, there's a tree. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Come on, you fucking bear. Humiliate yourself. <laughs> Brian trains bears to thumb their shitters and jerk off, and he gives them Swedish fish. Go ahead. It's the most fucked up thing. So they say to you, hey, what are you, you hear about this guy who's punching chimpanzees? <laughs> A fucking asshole. <laughs> Just gauging how fucked up you like it. Hey, come on over to my place. Check out my garage. Nate, go in there. Holy fuck, you have a bear. No, it's cool, man. It's cool. I give him Swedish fish and he thumbs his shitter and jerks off for us. <laughs> what the fuck kind of watch, shit is this? Watch my wife and kids love it. Just, Just make sure you don't run out of Swedish I gotta fish. Move, you gotta get him and just move his balls around a little bit. Go ahead and yeah. move your balls. There you go. Hey, that's a good one. There you go. That's it. He loves sweet fish. No, no, no. No, no. That's it, you dumb bear. No, no, no. You fucking bear. No, no, no. That's it, you fucking bear. <laughs> Why do you have a jar of Swedish? <laughs> so I can. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> die, die. Oh. Die, you fucking die, bear. Die, you fucking bear. I'll get another one. Oh, that was a good Swedish that was, fish. That was a bizarre. <coughs> bizarre. Yeah, that was weird. Let's take a break. I gotta pee. Very cool. <laughs> Uh, back from our piss break, I was just talking about how I saw Hamilton last night, and it's it's oh last night yeah it's a fucking masterpiece it, yeah. it really is and I define it I I guess a masterpiece in the sense that when you've been in a business for a long time and then you see a work of art or like a sort of somebody do something and you go I don't know how you did that like I don't even know I can't even conceive of how you could have put a story together and songs like that together on that level. And there were probably 36 songs. I mean, I don't know how. It was three That's hours. Three and, hours? Yeah, and the dancing, the singing. I'm not a big musical theater guy. Right. And, really? Yeah, right. But I could watch <laughs> that all day long. It was just, it was just, it's a national treasure, man. Yeah. I swear to God. I got I to gotta see it. I have not seen it. And yeah, during Brian's piss break, he made me come with him into the bathroom. And yep. He told me about it. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, and uh, yeah, you were saying you went by yourself, which is how I prefer to go to like concerts and stuff anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do well, it. I'm I brought gonna get my one... wife and my cha- my daughter, but they sat. They had to sit because tickets were so hard. Right. I had a, I sat alone, and right. they sat together. So, right. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But it, it's, there's something about sitting alone in the theater that that is I like. You can have yeah. your own private experience. Well, I was saying w- w- during the break, I was also saying that that uh, last time I was in New York, uh, my good pal Christy Montopoulos, whom you know also, yep. uh, played Mo in the Three Stooges. He plays Russ in Silicon Valley. He's an incredible actor and a chameleon. He did a he did a stint on uh, he he was the romantic lead of of waitress the musical on Broadway that was written all the music was written by Sarah Bareilles who's a you know a music Phenomenal. star pop star in her own right and she did a ten week stint also playing the female lead mm. so I went to the show by myself in New York and uh, yeah it was incredible and I'm sitting by myself and there was this nice couple to my left and on my right was this mom and two daughters. And uh, everyone was there to see Sarah Bareilles because it's these, you know, these pe- big fans of hers. And maybe my, maybe my, maybe my, maybe my, maybe might have cried. Oh, dude, mm, I, I might have cried a hey, little bit. Hey, I fucking cry in theater. Hey. I cry, <laughs> and I'm alone, yeah. and I'm crying because it's th- it's it's that good and that glorious. And I and you know what I cry about? I go like this. I swear to God, see? I go, I go, oh, I go. That's what human beings are capable yeah. of. In, because, in, in under favorable circumstances, and it's interesting that mm, oh, no. we have the ability to sing, and singing is mm, you're getting really is emotional the right heart. now. And I almost, I almost cried. I might have cried. I might have cried a lot when Sarah Bareilles is and she goes, she was, she was, she sang very beautiful. Mm. Excuse me. I love when I love. She was singing very beautiful songs, and she goes, "She is, she is, 
That's a really good Sarah Bareilles. It's a really good Sarah Bareilles impersonation. In a beautiful pie. It's a very good Sarah. She is gone, but she used to be mine. Really good. Dude. <laughs> oh God! Well, don't. What are you, are you farting out of your face? Oh, God. Yeah, I might have got misty. Um. Yeah. Fuck! Uh, it was good. Yeah. No. 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 no yeah. I got that. I I'm gonna go again. I don't like bad crying, uh, acting crying. Where, hey man. where you go? I'm Wendy, I, for me. I, I, your kids will do that. Yeah. I well, you guys are just yeah. mean, mean. And I'm like, you're yeah. fake crying, and it's <laughs> annoying me. Even though I love you as my child, you're annoying me right now. But like, and just like Nate would train a dog. Yeah. Wouldn't you do some laughter training then to say you're fucking around without saying fuck? Yep. Don't I'd say fuck. Hey, you fucking they, kid. They're gonna learn the real lying. world. Right. That's right. And when you say, hey, hey, stop fucking around, you're not actually crying. Yep. Do they start giggling and laughing? Um, <coughs> they do when Uncle yep. Will's there because I'm the fun laugh. uncle. I make them laugh. Yep. I, I believe in humor for all circumstances. That's true. It drives true. my wife crazy, but for me, yep. I believe in humor for fucking everything. Brian, if I can say something about my friend Brian Callen. Yep. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You would. I think there's room for humor. No, if you're on fire. Yeah. If there's you're on fire. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I there's mean, room for humor. My my buddy, if my you buddy, ever write a book, that's what it should be called. My buddy Dave Otley, who has to have a very very dangerous operation. He's got he had spinal bifida, so he doesn't have a neck, and he has he has a hunchback, and he's you know it's a, it's a hard life for him right now, and his spine is crushing his lungs. Oh man, yeah, so he's in pain all the time, and he gets shingles, and you know it's, oh, he's yeah. having a hard time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. funny as shit, comic. Yeah, always positive. Yeah. And I can never help but to just say things that, like, I don't know, like, well, <coughs> did you Excuse ever me. think that maybe you are this way because you're a sinner? Jesus and, Yeah, Christ. and I say stuff like that. Oh, and boy. And he can't get enough of it, or he'll tell me how he's in pain, and I, I try to not... I try to not get sexually aroused by his pain. Oh, that's and just intense. He, he's like, you're so sick, and I'll yeah. make a video, and he sends it to his wife. Oh, boy. And then she laughs... But all That's you have up. is, it's about humor, you fucking, I'm sorry that you yeah. have that issue with your, that yeah. your spine looks like an S and it's crushing your you fucking know, lungs. Deal my, with it. My mom is, my mom uh, is, is the comedy of the family and she's like, her side of the family is like just sing and dance and it's an Italian family. My mom and dad are Italian. And uh, my cute little mom, who's like, you know, she's this tiny little cute potato. And um, so she's 79 years old and, and we, she just had a pacemaker put in. Mm -hmm. Which is an amazing um, thing nowadays. It's like an outpatient. It's very fast. Mm. It's like a couple hours. Really? Yeah, it's like two or three hours. Just what is little, it? And, anyway? and it's local, local anesthetic. She does not go to sleep. <clears throat> Pacemaker basically, you know, they make an incision. They put it. Uh, they put it just like right in. They just put it in a low. They can put it on the right, but they usually put it on the left. And a and a there we are. And they they send a little electrode, a little wire down into the meat of the heart. Yeah. And if it goes below. Whatever the doctor you know, uh, decides, fifty heart. beats per heart right, per minute. It just shocks it to keep it going. Wow. So my cute little mom had a, a pacemaker put in, and so we're going in there, and she's getting into the into the you know bed, and they're about to wheel her off and stuff. And so she got into her smock, and she's getting into the thing, and she's always kidding around. And she says to the nurse, she goes, "I hope I have a girl this time." You know, <laughs> laying down. <in> the <laughs> That's My very nurse funny. Didn't know what the nurse didn't know what to. That's what to very say. Funny. yeah. Constantly, you know. I, I just think that there's never a place where humor doesn't work. I think it's important, and yeah. I think uh, sometimes it, it doesn't work when you're on you know on stage doing stuff. But um, yeah. You know, when you're sometimes things can be so brutal in life, but for the most no, I just part, mean like let's if you're, always get them laughing. Yeah, but if you're up there and and people are not really responding, never uh, happens in kind. To me. You're a you're Never a fucking dy it. dynamo and yeah. and you crush the rooms best in right? the world. Yeah. Okay. You know what? That's I'll give not you that. me. That's what everybody else. Well, does. Brian Callen's one of the funniest people on the planet. Yeah. Okay, I will That's give right. you that. Yeah. And uh, absolutely. All right. Shh. 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 Mm, I'm just saying. Shh. But I'm don't, don't, paying you a compliment, so okay. just. But don't don't shh. don't do, don't do that. Shh. Don't do that. Hold on I a second. I don't deal well with that. Shh. Don't fucking shh me, man. Shut up. And um. Oh my god. Shut up. So when I'm paying you a compliment, shut. Just shut up. Okay, no. okay, shut up for a second. So when you're, oh, there you go. There you go. Hold on. Go ahead. Thumb your thumb your thumb thumb your thumb your shit. There you go. You fucking dumb bear. Right, so when going. you're up on stage, right, and you're shredding and you're killing, yeah, 
And then you try something else that's new. You try something out. Yeah. When it goes over like shit. Nope, doesn't. But then anyway. that's not funny. Yeah. Okay. That was that's the point you were making. You yeah, that's my man. fucking right. complex point. Yeah. Why don't you, you know. squeeze your balls a little too hard so it hurts? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Humiliate yourself, you stupid bear. Good, good. There's it. That's what sweet fish are. Fucking That's how the Inuit bear. find the polar bear. Yep, I know. When squeeze you're fishing, your, sweet, your fishing Swedish fish, yep. and he's over in the 7-Eleven parking lot, yep. and the polar bear just backs his nuts up to that air compressor. Yep. And Ookpik and his friends are like, let's send a fucking uh, femur bone into this fucking polar bear's neck. He's eating <laughs> Swedish fish and sour keys over by the 7-Eleven, pushing his balls up against the air compressor. You hear it? Ooh. And they all pile in their fucking Ford F-150 and head over there. And, and drive a femur bone, a sharpened femur bone yeah. in the bowl. Or just neck. smash the fucking truck into the bear. Right, because with, with, they've attached the spear to the front of the fucking... Right, they got the thing all mad maxed out with a bunch of bones and spears yeah, in yeah, front. Yeah, 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 and yeah. just, yeah, and fucking, uh, yeah. what's his face, Tom Hardy on the front of it, like... Don't eat, the, don't eat uh, polar bear liver. I think it's Why? got. I think it's got so much vitamin A or some kind of vitamin that you'll fucking die. <laughs> you'll just die of overdosed. Vitamin. That's an incredible. You're, like you'll bleed out. Like it will. Your I think your body won't be able to clot blood or some crazy shit. That's you're tremendous. Just, yeah. That it has. That's its defense. Oh yeah. But it's like go ahead and kill me, but if you eat my liver, I'm yeah, too yeah. healthy for you. Don't I'll eat, make you bleed. Don't eat my fucking liver. Fucking. Uh, that's a rookie mistake to go right for the liver when you kill a polar bear. It's amazing. I, that I go these, for the thigh meat. It's amazing how these animals have. Uh, have advanced and how they have uh, evolved over the years. You believe that the world is 10,000 years old and flat, though, right? Who I do not. I do not, sir. You were telling me... Nope. You were telling me recently. You're spreading rumors now. Oh, no, I'm not spreading rumors. No, you're trying rumor, to create but... this Christian fundamentalist thing around me, and I'm not that guy. Yeah, but Brian, you said that you said... If I know my friend, Brian... Yeah. Careful now. You, recently, I'm not, right. I'm not trying to spread shit. Okay, uh, you, you claim that the earth is 10,000 years old and flat. Okay, I never said that. Well, yes. No, you're spreading rumors now and people and, are going to think And you, were, you said, uh, you said I'm, uh, he, you, this, it was a while ago. Okay, careful now. It was like uh, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. You said, by gum, the world is 10,000 years old and gum. it's flat or Ted Cruz will not be the next president of the God United States. God damn it. I never said that. That's what you said. I'm no, sorry. I I'm didn't say that. Just reporting the now news. stick your whole hand up your ass. There you go. 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 All right, good. I yeah. love having sweet fish on, on hand for you. you it's fuck. fucking, yeah. it does control me. You low esteem bear. <laughs> Low self-esteem. My, my bear. bear's got low self-esteem. He'll do oh, anything I tell him. He'll do for anything. Fucking sweet that, fish. He just cut cut his claws off, and he just fucking pushes his whole hey, let's, paw. Let's let's go ass. to let's go to some current events because I I got shit to do. I got a kung fu class I have to get to and everything oh, else. Gee whiz. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a. I don't want to bum everyone out, but yeah, it's well, been the news, right? Mexico yes, had a huge. Dude, I was watching on Instagram. These buildings fall down yeah. in Mexico. I mean, wow. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a heavy, really too much. It's a heavy situation. Sometimes and, the earth just shrugs and goes, get off me. <sighs> also, in Mexico, the building standards are probably not not uh, that up to par. No, they're not. And there's a little clip of this video. Yeah, I saw this. I have not seen this. We're, wa we're watching a video. Uh, a couple That's people in the middle of the street. The That's her building? People get it's so yeah, terrifying. So that yellow building behind them. Okay. You'll see how here. fast. Oh, no. Well, remember, a building's mostly air. The World Trade Centers were 95% air. It's air, right? It's all air, and then it's just, you know, one one thing falls on top of the other. It's it's. You've ooh. seen a bunch of the buildings collapse the same way, too. Yeah. It's just like They go straight down. They went That's instantly what they down, do. yeah. They go straight down. Boy, oh, when boy. When the structure's compromised, it falls in on itself. That's too much. That's why um, the World Trade Center didn't fall over. They're like, it could have been, it had to be detonated because oh, that's the way it falls. Did it? They put? Did they put charges in there? Is that what the no, CIA no, no. did, guys? I don't know. Uh, no, you can see. Or did they do that? In, or did uh, maybe Alex Jones has a, a theory on on the Mexico earthquake? They make a fucking frogs gay. <laughs> yeah. Did the CIA do that? Did they? Did they rig? Explain all Tower things? Seven. Yeah. They got. They got the Hillary's a lizard, on, on, and she took Tower Seven and put charges in it. Yeah. And they make a fucking frogs gay. All right. <laughs> take it easy, Alex. Well, why don't you tell me why? The Tower 7 fell on its own. Well, if you're so, I'm here with a Navy SEAL. Well, you're I'm the here Navy with a, SEAL. I'm a Navy SEAL. That's so spot on. I, I am, I, I'm a Navy SEAL. I, I own 87 dogs, and all of them were trained by Nate. And when I was the governor of Minnesota, 
I had over a hundred dogs. Now, what say you to that? Well, if you're such a patriot, I don't know. You what, know how the nine eleven. Uh, ha- you know what happened. What's that happened to your dogs? I guess you Jesse? must have been there. I was I guess you must have been there. I wasn't. And th- Nate would tell you that a press of canario that six press of canarios could uh, don't say take down a building because that's not factual. I was not going to say that. Right. I was going to say they could. Four of them could take out a nuclear submarine. That's not true. We had them doing it in the Marines. I don't know about that. I you was said, a Navy SEAL. I know you were. You said now, that. I live no. in the Baja. All right. And I don't, I, I spend less than six months a year in the continental United States of America. <laughs> I have a thousand gallons of potable water. I don't know out what there, you're saying. And you I just... have a silo full of tortillas. Okay, but what is the point of what the, what is the well, point? Well, why don't you tell me? I don't know, man. You you're, tell me. Why just, don't you tell me I, what the point is? I'm trying is to follow. If you're such a patriot. I am a patriot, but you know what? Just because yeah. you have a silo full now of Now you want to show us pictures of uh, shaven sh- and shorn chimps, and, you, and you've never stepped in the, in, the, uh, in the arena of battle with a chimp. And when you I do, never said I, you'll be thumbing your ass for sure, I, because I, I have gone in hand-to-hand combat with many chimps. You have? Armed, yes. Armed only with a polar bear femur. And when, that's something you don't know anything I about. I don't believe because you. Because I'll be over there in Da Nang and I'll be over there on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. There are no chimps there. And, there and no I'll take in, the chimps in with me while you're over here taking patty cake lessons. I'm not... With, I, with your boxing The Vietnam coach. War is over. And the Vietnam War never started. <laughs> what? What? What did she just say? I said the Vietnam War started so that it could you never said end. It never started. So what did I never said that? You, I don't know. Why what, don't you tell me what I said? I don't fucking know. I'm trying to you follow tell you, me. Jesse. I'll tell you what I said. What did you say? I said the Vietnam War was started by chimpanzees. <laughs> That is factually it's, incorrect. It's factually true. What would you know? That's Why don't you tell me what I happened? am telling you that you that's... You weren't there. Why? I, I, I watched Nixon sign an order. So what did the chimps do? They started the war? I wrestled Bob Backlund for 45 minutes in the Philadelphia Spectrum. <laughs> well, fine, but that doesn't to make To a draw. You, it doesn't make so you So why right. don't you tell me how I All right, know. you know what? Get him out of here. <laughs> All right, fine, I'll leave. Bye-bye. I'm God going damn, that guy's... Bar. That guy's so hard to follow. What the fuck is he doing? In I don't here? know, man. He's just fuck Jesse Ventura just runs in here and fucks your podcast up. Yeah, he doesn't. He's in control. He makes this is no a, sense. Yeah, well, there's security here for a reason. Well, he's huge. So what are you going to yeah, do? He's a big guy. But, yeah. You know. All right. Anyway. All right. So, anyway. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Let's move on from the Mexico quake. God bless everybody. I hope. Mm-hmm. I hope they they pull through with this. It sucks. I don't okay. know what to say. That's such a yeah, platitude. Yeah. It's it's you know, well, yeah. I mean, what you know, what can you say? Nothing. It's too much. Nothing. It's just too much. We wish them the best. Um. The next one. Ooh. The oh, sequel nice. to Judgment Day, the part two, which was an amazing one. The best one. She's coming back, Linda Hamilton and Schwarzenegger. Sweet. But yeah, but they're basing it off in a, like a new character, but they'll be in the movie. Oh, that's cool. She With was James fantastic Cameron, right? Right? in Terminator 2. That sh- the way she cocked that shotgun uh, it lives oh, yeah. in all of our memories. And when a happy bear thumbs his nub, he's usually <laughs> she thinking was in, about that. She was that. one of the first women on screen to have like exactly. lats and... Yeah, and and delts. I mean, she had she worked her ass it off. It was it was it was. Uh, she was a bad motherfucker mm-hmm. who was sexy as hell, and uh, and yeah, her shit in that movie was man oh man. When she's like doing the chin ups when you first see her. Oh yeah, she's in the, the, uh, the when she jail turns the bed the upside down. Oh, yeah, oh, she's doing awesome. those chin ups and just beating the living shit out of guys. And a lot of people would be like. Oh, well, yeah, you know, when you're watching a movie, it's like, yeah, right, that girl's just kicking the shit out of five guys. Sometimes it's not done that well in movies. This is one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, she's kicking the living tar out of these three guards who come in. Yep. Man, it was fucking... Yep. I don't give a fuck how big you are. When you take the, the butt of a shotgun to the face, you're going to drop to your knees, and that's something you've never <laughs> felt, oh, Brian God. Callen. God, what is and I know here? a thing or two. I've, I've served with women in the Marines. Uh, I, you I, said you were in the SEALs. Right. I was in the Navy SEALs. Okay, but you said the Marines just Well, now. I did not say that. <laughs> that's not what I said. You just I said, said that. that. I no, I had a it. secret... I had a secret team of a dozen <laughs> women... And me, I don't. And think we so. would go. Yes, we would. And we went to Cambodia together. And then, what did you do in Cambodia? We took out the enemy, and then we had sex. We had sex. Well, have you ever had a thirteen? Some I've never had a. 13th. I have. All right, you're well, not a patriot if you haven't had a thirteen. Some I don't think that's a good measure. Twelve of Navy SEALs built like Linda Hamilton, and I'll tell you another thing. What they sure did 
cock my shotgun that day. <laughs> okay, we, can I gotta, we get Jesse? You got to get out of here. All right, I'll we're leave. doing current I'll, events. Fine, bye bye. Fuck, man, can Jeez, somebody is. please lock just, the door so he doesn't? Don't let it. Don't just tell them. At he's the front. a giant. They don't. They're not going to stop. You're not going to stop him with a fucking. He's picture, also a celebrity. A little and he's a fucking, piece of paper that says we're recording in here. He's the governor of Minnesota. They're yeah. always going to stop the governor. All right, that's kind of damn it. All right, so good. I'm looking forward to this. I'm glad Linda Hamilton is working. That sucks. She'd been out of work for a while, and she's a great actress. Well, you were so. saying, too, how James Cameron was the first person to really bring a girl, make her tough oh, yeah. in a movie? Yeah. You know how like there's a lot of 50, 60-year-old tough guys now in movies? Yeah. There's no female version of it, so that's why that's one of the reasons he's bringing her back. Love yep. it. Sigourney. Jeez. Yeah, Sigourney. Sigourney. And uh, then, yeah. Got Sigourney, yeah. but... Uh, okay, good. this one. I remember... We played this before a guy dropping his ring. Yep. When proposing. Yep. And it oh, went no. to under the bridge and it landed in the water. They could never find it. Oh yep. no. <laughs> oh man. So look what at happened? this. Look at these I'll two sweeties. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it went down. It's oh, very no. sad. They did a GoFundMe page yeah. for the goal of like three thousand. It only had like a hundred something dollars and it closed. Yeah. So it was really sad. And Jimmy Kimmel invited him over to his studio Aww. on TV and check it out. Not the friend. This is Neil Lane from. They bring out Neil Lane, a jeweler. Neil. How are you, Neil? Thanks for coming. Show them what you have in that in that little box. This Neil little has box. Something special for you. Okay. So that is With Brian in ten years, ring. by the way. This guy. <laughs> Brian, that's you in ten years. <laughs> Dude, how awesome! I love our country. Oh. Smaller diamonds. A hundred smaller diamonds. Is that as nice as the ring you lost? We never got to. Nah, see it's that. all right. I guess. I mean, <laughs> <I'm perfect. laughs> Anyways, it's a long one, but they recreated it. They had the set built at, yeah, at the studio, and he redid it, and it was great. It was amazing. That is so, so cool. Was awesome. I think I love that. You know what I think? What? I think that's very sweet. <laughs> yeah, it is sweet. It you is know sweet. what I think? What? I think it's very sweet. Okay, you're getting emotional. Just don't. And I think that. Oh no. Um. It makes me think of music, like, <laughs> like when I watched. They were on a when I bridge. The waitress with Sarah Bareilles, <laughs> and it makes me think of that song that she sings about the pie. Do you have a sing- Do you have a song for these two? Yep. You covered your mouth you covered when mouth. You, you dropped that, dropped that ring. ring. Something and I would never do. do. We braided your hair and I wore my glasses on went on Jimmy Kimmel's show. <laughs> you are pink and she is brown. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> We're going to have cute little Samoan kids with red hair. And they're going to get teased at school. Oh, cute little cute Samoan, Samoan kids, kids with, with red, red hair. hair. And they're going to get teased, teased at school. At school. <laughs> Chubby now the Samoan one has been missing a meal, and that's a ho ho okay. <laughs> and they eat lots of taro root and spam and rice, and they mash it together in the morning. They never go hungry, they <laughs> are strong. They he eat- is clumsy, but he is strong. <laughs> she would eat a polar bear and save some for him after they smash it into the air compression tank. And She's not afraid of the sun, but he starts to smolder <laughs> almost immediately. <laughs> He's never been home with her to San Diego, where she's from, because it's too hot. He's a Wisconsin-born, Wisconsin-born. He's born. an albino. He's a Wisconsin albino, and he loves to eat cheese Jeez. in the Mall of America. He's a slow-moving diabetic in the Mall of America. Knock his glasses off and shoo him in the ass down the up. <laughs> Why, that's, that's super tomato. mean. <laughs> Put him in the sun and bury him to his neck for dropping that fucking ring hey where's Bury the- him into the neck and put him in the sun for dropping that fucking ring teach him a lesson <laughs> he's on jimmy kimball but the next show he's on they gotta fire teach face him a lesson. fire face fire face fire face fire hey, never tell you never tell you about Thanks, speaking guys, of listening that was, that was a good terrible song, song. Uh, yeah uh, ever tell you about speaking of san diego one time i was at a charger game with my good buddies uh cyrus and helpman yeah and um we were we were at the game and there were these two kids behind us, these two like twenty year old kids that were just hammered, right? And they were being such dicks, but they were funny. And then in front of us, we're at a Steelers game. I'm a Steeler fan, and um, so we're sitting, you know, we're there at San Diego. These guys behind us are San Diego fans. Guys in front, row of Steeler fans, right? Mm-hmm. All together, one guy in a ra- in Raiders gear, whatever. He is. It was just 
let your mind run wild. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. This guy starts jawing with the kids. He's like, yeah, I bet you guys paid primo dollar for your tickets. Just being a douchebag. He's like, he goes, you know what I paid? Man, I paid nothing. I know so-and-so and and I got these. And he literally, and the guy's like, yeah, whatever, ass, fuck you. And they're on his ass. And we're in the middle of this. He turns around. He's making the money sign with his fingers and thumbs. He's like, you don't have any money. You don't have, takes out a hundred dollar bill. And he's like, yeah, you see. And the guy just goes, yoink, and takes the hundred dollar bill. The kids. And they're like, yeah, I got money. I got money. The whole section's laughing. This dude sitting in front of us looks like this guy. He's like this redheaded dude. He's out there in a visor. His skin is a bright shade of neon red at this point. It's the fourth quarter. He's had like, you know, 10 Miller lights. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just ruddy and he's, it's so, he's so sunblasted and he's just sitting there steaming. He's had enough of these two guys and we're a clock. And he's had enough of the, of the teenagers or the, uh, the teenagers. He's with the Raiders fan and they were all like, you know, they were all like uh, my age. And then these kids were behind us. It was so funny. We're just like, watch, watch, watch why he's going to blow, man. Look at this tea kettle. He's going to blow. He turns around. He goes, he just stands up and he gets in their face and he goes, let me tell you guys something. And the kid, one of the kids without l- missing a beat goes, habba, 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 I got the alcohol face. <laughs> the whole section laughs again. And the dude just turns around, sits down. Oh my God. I was dying. Laugh. Habba, 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 I got the alcohol face. <laughs> just shut him down. Just shut. And he just clammed it back up and he just pushed it back down where it started in elementary Uh, school very good and i empathize with him and sympathize very good and we've all been there in our own ways Mm -hmm. and this man was bullied by people half his age yeah and and i'm sorry but it was he he was okay he had his row of friends Mm -hmm. but he shouldn't have started it with the 20 year olds my buddy my buddy my father's my father's friend um, sweet guy, but was a complete nerd in high school and teased. And he bought this top of the line Porsche. He made a fortune and drove his Porsche to his high school reunion oh, yeah. and was just like, I'm going to show them. And my dad said, how'd it go? And he, to his credit, he said, you know what, dude? I realized I was just a nerd with a Porsche. Oh, boy. I was still a nerd. That's not true. And my though. dad gave him the middle finger and slapped his fucking mouth. <laughs> what? No, he did fed not. Him, fed him a sweet fish. No, Big Mike yeah. did not do yeah. that. And Don't him, say that about your dad. Men have sit on his no. own digits. Ah, uh, see, that's him some... in his garage, and, yeah. st- and he's still in the garage. Don't blame day. your uh, yeah. your mishappenings and your your horrible behavior on Big Mike. I'm just telling you what happened. No, that's not what happened. You can say what you want, but I'm just telling you what uh, my dad okay, did. Okay, well, I guess that's I guess that's the end of that. I hear what you're saying completely, yeah. but also no. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see what Good the next current event is. I'm really glad that these guys made it out of that. Yeah. They're very cute. They're a cute yeah, couple. Yeah, they they're fucking adorable is what they <laughs> yeah, are. They are cute And they couple. got a ring, and then they're going to go to their 10-year anniversary with the ring, and then, you know, he's yep. going to get, someone's going to get in his face and say, hubba, hubba, hubba. Yep. Actually, yep. that's yep. the last current event. Sweet. Mm. <laughs> I would do a dropping knowledge, but it was, it's just too serious. And it, You know what, though? I, 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 I read an interesting thing on... Um, <laughs> We break into teams, right? Human beings are tribal apes. And uh, something to keep in mind is that people love to fight over the most mundane things. The Protestant and Catholic wars that went on over probably almost 100 years, at least 60 years, the hundreds of thousands of people that were killed between basically Christians that believed in the exact same God, believed in the exact same Bible— and this is all in Europe. This is after the Reformation. You know what the Reformation is? Do you guys know what the Reformation is? When Martin Luther, who was a German priest, nailed the hundred proclamations to the door in Wittenberg, Germany, I believe, it was one of the most significant events in history because this, this Jesuit priest basically said, hey, um, as a Catholic, I, I guess it, to be a good Catholic, I basically I have a hierarchy, which is the priest, starting with the Pope at the top. The Pope was as close to God as you get. And the priest basically would tell me, you know, there was a whole, there were rituals. You would do good acts. You would go to confession. You would take Holy Communion. But there was a ritual. You would go to church. He would read in Latin. Nobody spoke Latin, but you'd have to listen to him. And he was the authority. The priest, the cardinal, the bishop, they were the authorities, and they would not be questioned. And many times you would do the church favors, whether and by the way, sometimes they were sexual. That there was a lot of corruption. What? And yep. And no. they and you would get you would get um, what was the word for it? But essentially, 
they had the keys to heaven. And the Pope, for sure, but, you know, the priest would pray for you and you would have a better chance of getting into heaven. Along comes Martin Luther, who says, it's not about doing good deeds. It's not about all these rituals. It's not about praying to saints. It's not about even going to church. It's about the grace of God, reading the Bible. If you read the Bible and you believe and you live a good life, then you essentially are a Protestant. You don't need this massive hierarchy that starts in Rome. And with this, with all these, like, you know, high priests, essentially, that was radical. That was what they called heresy, which if you're a heretic, it means you're speaking against the church. And he had to leave Bitburg and everything else. But the bottom line is he started a reformation. And a lot of people went, yeah, to be a man of God or a woman of God, I don't need the Catholic church. I just need the Bible. So that's where Protestant church came along. And and I'm paraphrasing the history here, but if you ever notice how Catholic churches have stained glass, they've got pictures of saints, they've got a lot of ornamentation, Protestant churches are basically very, very stark um, houses where you come in and pray, but there's not a lot of iconography or anything else, because that was considered a bit, that was considered, like, you know, that was considered very kind of um, almost idol worship. It was it was considered, uh, all you needed was the Bible and and a preacher, or not even. Long story short, not over really. the years, not over really. the years, basically, not in, really in a long France, story short. Uh, you're right. The St. Bartholomew's Massacre, and I'm fucking this up because I, I'm, I'm not going to get it exactly right, but the St. Bartholomew's Massacre is when Catholics came in to a French town and killed something like 10,000 uh, French Protestants, uh, men, women, and children, because the Catholics believe that you have to do good deeds, Catholics believe you have to go through the rituals of the church that they grew up with, and a good Christian does good deeds. And here's the irony. And so they go into a Protestant village, people who are Protestant, and killed about 10,000 of them. Oui. And it was called the St. Bartholomew's Massacre. The, the Pope was so overjoyed at the news that not only did he uh, essentially hold a, a day of prayer, uh, sort of festivities, but then he had a commission an artist to draw the recreation of the massacre. It's called St. Bartholomew's Massacre, and it's in the Vatican in one of the rooms. And guess what? That room is closed to the public. Now, this is not a bat, and it's not to bash the Catholic oh, yeah. Church. What this is, is this is how human beings behave. And this is how little it takes to people love to draw teams. People love to get on one side and go, you know what? You don't believe you should do good acts. You just believe all you need is the Bible. I'm going to kill you. And vice versa, by the way. A lot of Protestant killing of Catholics, a lot of Catholics killing of Protestants. They believe in the same God. They were vicious wars. They tore Europe apart, and they lasted for almost 100 years. You... Uh, Thank you, everybody. That That's really, really... I did not know... And by the way... I would also yeah. add, add that the Protestant Catholic wars in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, raged and they were brutal. Now, a lot of that had to do with loyalty to the crown, to England, but it also had its division with Catholicism and Protestantism, the Anglican Church, the, the English Church, and the Protestant Church. I will not, I mean, church. I will not comment uh, so much on religion's place uh, in a modern world. Some would say it's been replaced by the Internet. That is not my place here to preach from any sort of uh, pulpit or yep. point of view. I will say that I was raised Roman Catholic. That's a fact. And I will say that you have a lovely Venice mural here on the wall that I'm looking at. And if you say one more word against God, I will I didn't say replace anything. this mural <laughs> I, with a mural of me I, beating the shit no, out of you. No. And we'll call it St. Brian's Massacre. I didn't say that. And no, I didn't say that. You're, uh, you know, my no. parents were never all that religious. You know, yep. I had to go to summer school or yep. uh, what is it, Sunday school? Yep. And I did, you know, I got the Holy Communion and all yep. that stuff. Yep. And then I went my own way with my own, you know, religion, spirituality. Yep. That's nobody's business. Yeah. But I will say, yeah. You, 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 you talk like that again. No, I didn't. Now, now hold on. We're gonna, I'm gonna take you no. out to the parking lot. No. See, and we're gonna have people. We're gonna take a lot now, of pictures. The whole point of that Kim story. And MJ are gonna take pictures. The whole point of that story. And then we're gonna give those to artists. No, we believe in the same moral. God. Beautiful moral. We believe in the same God. Now, well, everyone believes in the same I just tried God to make a because point. human beings are looking up to the sun okay, and going, but I, no, "What's it all about?" You not, call it God or no, uh, fucking but, Allah or Uma or okay, Oprah or whatever mean, you want to say. It doesn't mean we should resort to violence. And I was just trying to say that this doesn't have to be the same Bartholomew's massacre. That, and it won't be. It and won't be. For more on this, go to mixedmentalarts.com. 
where I did a great podcast with Thaddeus Russell about the difference between plural truths and fixed truths. I look forward and to listening to that. had the idea that belief in a fixed truth, in one truth, is the most destructive idea in history. We had a bit of an argument about it. Well, I, I don't disagree. Podcast. What do you mean? What was the argument? Well, you know, the idea that so the, you have to be very careful. Well, people love to have the truth. This is what ideology yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Ideology is that. Ideology is so they're, they're, if you were a communist, I mean, people, the communist movement is based on the idea that we have, we have the economic truth. The truth is it's in Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. They came up with the, the seal on e economic science. Now, we know now that there is no seal in economic science. Economics is a very complicated thing. But whenever, well, this is the difference between, between religion and philosophy. Philosophy deals with reason and, and, and logic and mathematics to try to prove a point. But it's always moving. Science is the same way. Science is basically admitting your own ignorance, okay, and, tr and using models, simulation, and the recreation of phenomena with models and experimentation to prove a point and get closer to the, to the truth. When Muhammad, the prophet in Islam, said, I am the seal of all the prophets. In other words, it, this is it for me. I, th th it starts and ends with me. The, I'm the last prophet to, to speak to God. Here is the truth. You don't need any more. That is what religion is. That is what ideology is, whether it's communism, whether it's Christianity. You have to be careful with these things. too. So when you believe in something and it's a fixed truth and you say this is the only truth, the discussion is over, you, have, you, have, you become a fanatic. Because anybody other, anybody who has a different point of view, anybody has an interpretation of Christianity or Islam, both, by the way, both those religions can be interpreted many different ways. So I'm being a little unfair. They've always been very, very, you know, but, but so be careful about thinking you have the truth with a capital T. You probably don't. The truth is there are a lot of different truths. You know what, Brian, you're absolutely right about that. And yeah. In Canada, we have a saying uh -huh. that I believe trumps all of the, uh, all of the, uh, the, the what a zealot would think, what an ide uh, an ideology that one would hold, yeah. uh, a truth that one would hold on to, mm -hmm. uh, despite uh, despite uh, the cries of people, just despite the the yeah, uh, yearnings just... of the heart, okay. and it yeah, trumps it trumps all of that. Yeah, okay. And it's just a very simple uh, adage. It's a simple all right. uh, uh, all right. saying. It's a philosophy yep. in itself. Yep. Well, okay. And now here let me it get is. Back to this. And it's a hold on. Mm -hmm. I haven't even said it yet. Yep. Here we go. This is what we say in Canada. You ready? Sure. And if people just did things the Canadian way, mm -hmm. I'm originally from Canada. Yep. I'm a citizen of both countries, though. Yep. So don't say, oh, Will, shut up. Yep. You're just a Canadian. Mm -hmm. Go back, because you're never getting rid of me, America. I am a citizen of these United States. Yep. I vote in your elections. Yep. I take part in your economy. So as an American, I can say this legally. Yep. Suck my dick. Okay, man. Okay, now hold on. Okay, man. I'm no, not done. No, no, I'm, see, sa I'm saying as an American. Uh, no, I know, but. So, hold on. Yeah. Let me just, I'm an American. I can Go say ahead. what I want. First Amendment protects me. Okay. Suck my fucking cock. Okay, bro. Hold on. You're being so rude right now. Hold on. Yeah. I'm not saying it's to you. Okay, but, but yeah, I feel like you are. Suck my fat dick. To anybody, hold on. I'm trying to hold have on. a conversation about truth. Hold on. Plural Put, truths. This is what I'm saying. Get my fat hog hard and put it in your mouth. I now you said that six times. We get it. Yeah, okay. that, that's. I'm saying I can say that as an as an American citizen. Yeah, that's fine. I can say that. Yeah, but, but I'm going to tell you what we say in Canada that would dispel all of the all of the. And I am not going to make light of the of the the as Carl Sagan calls it the rivers of blood that have been spilled from one side of this shit pebble. To the other. Yeah. And I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. When I based say, on the fact that we have the truth, you guys are wrong, we're going right. to kill you. And people have, have uh, based That's their, what their beliefs in these ideologies, these, yeah. these quote-unquote truths. Our truth is rooted in love and truth. Right. Your, 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 our, your side is rooted in evil and right. falsehood. So we're going to kill you. Right, so we're going to kill you. We That's gotta, what we ISIS have a, does. Right, that's, that's right. That's what the Protestant Reformation was that's about right. with Catholics Correct. and Protestants. Correct. We're bringing it full circle. It's no, it's, that's what communism was versus capitalism. It's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's nothing short we, of evil. Communism is the way anybody else is wrong. We're yeah. going to kill you. And Stalin killed, what, 20 million people or uh, something? More like than that. that. Yeah. Pol Pot did, so, and, so, and, and look at Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong that, killed, that what, like 50 million people? Yeah, that piece of shit starved his own people. Yep. Fuck that guy, too. So with respect to all that, we have the answer in Canada. Are you ready? Yeah. And I would love for all your listeners, uh, and especially the Diamond listeners of the 10-Minute Podcast, because <laughs> yep. they are Diamond listeners. We're whittling down. Yep. The, yeah, that's right. We're yep. going to get that one Diamond listener. Yep. But listeners of, of both podcasts and everyone within the reach of my voice, yep. I would love for you to share in this uh, Canadian uh, philosophy. Ready? Yep. Be a good shit.
Be a good shit. Well, I'm right. going to write a religious book. You know what it's going to be what? called? What? Be a good shit. Don't say shit. Why? And you know I, what I, it's going to say in the inside? It's going to be a one-page book. You know why? Wh- I think you know why. What's it going to say inside? It's going to say be a good shit. That's right. All right. Be a good shit. All right, man. Forward's going to say be a good shit. My right. blog's going to say be a good shit. All right, so that's the one-page one book. You don't cover, have to buy it. It's going to say be a good shit. You don't no, have to buy it. I just, I, you, you guys already know the book. Yeah. Why would you buy a book that you already know? All right, well, I'm not selling it to you. Just remember Will's Congrats on the book. Will's the the yeah. book of religion. Yeah. Uh, fuck <laughs> off, Will. The book of religion, no. and you remember religion no, from I, when uh, our time together yeah. over many podcasts, yeah. of course, the ten minute podcast. Yeah. You understand religion, yeah. and you know that the decree is be a good shit. All right, look, just and if you don't want to be a good shit, yeah. Suck my dick. All right. And the, the point he's making is it just be responsive to evidence. Right. Don't but be as an, an American, ideologue. I'm saying. Don't be an idiot, ideologue. Don't, don't just join a team and think oh, that you have the teams. truth. You don't have the fucking truth. Fucking fuck teams, man. Fuck teams. Get out right. there. By yourself. Ow. What is that? Ow. Ow. Right. You know I'm what? a lone wolf. You there know you that. There you go. You're a lone wolf, too. All right. Hold on. Ow. I ain't right. no bear back thumbing your, it. Back, ah. your, back your balls up to Ooh. that fucking. Ooh. Back your balls Ooh. up to that. Ooh. Ooh. There you go. Burn the balls. There you go. There you go. You I don't want to eat any more of those. Fucking, I can't eat any more of those. You tiny little one. You I don't want to eat any more of that. You little piece, you I don't fucking wanna... bear. <laughs> there you go. There you go, you little bear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a real <laughs> what shit What a fun show. episode. Yeah, it was good stuff. It's always great to be here, Brian. I always like doing uh, I wanna thank, funny things I want to thank you, you, Will, for, for Nate Chomer. Thanks for showing up. One of these and, days, uh, dude, we're going to uh, let people in on how we actually talk. Yeah. But until then, I'm just going to be full of shit on your podcast. All right, man. Well, I wish we could have a real sit here and. Goof around. No, fuck that. Well, I don't think your listeners would like that. No. Let I me mean, just show up and not fucking uh, dick around like an insecure fucking, you know, yeah. dip, dip shit. Up what, do you, what are you insecure jokes? about as we leave? And maybe give a little word to everybody. Everybody out there is a little afraid. What should they do? Everyone's afraid of stuff. Yeah. Well, Everyone's got their own issues. Okay, so what do we do, Will? Give it, leave us with, with a, drop some knowledge for us. I'll drop some knowledge for you. Yeah. I'm not going to get emotional. Well. <clears throat> I just had some sugar, so... I'm feeling a high from the sugar, and okay. I'm not emotional. Don't cry. No, I stuffed it down with All the right. food. Give, ah, uh, fuck. With the food. All right, well, give us something here, because you're an emotional eater. Mm. Okay. Come on, you fuck, you mm. fucking bear. I'll, I'll you help food. you out. I'll help everybody out. You, you shit digit. Everybody has different problems. Come on, you bear. Just oh. whatever your problem is. Go ahead. There you're sitting in your own waist. Don't eat. Don't put it in a sandwich. All right, man, you know, this has been a fucking disaster. This is a fighter and a kid. Ah, We're out.